can't take you seriously. I might just leave this bit in. This is the intro to the podcast today, folks. I can't be bothered to do that. Hello, lovely people, and welcome back to our podcast, because Jerry has just been making me laugh for the last five minutes, and we've only been going for... How long have we been on this call? I don't know. I, I've Three minutes. <laughs> Three minutes. Welcome to the Distinct and Jovial Podcast, people. <laughs> Welcome to the Distinct and Jovial Podcast. My name is Dom, and I am joined by my lunatic co-host, that is Jerry. Good How are you that. doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> yes. You are a ridiculous man, but I love you. So Thank so you. Okay. I love you too. Uh, it is the 28th of October 2022. It is quarter past nine at night. As we do, we like to do these in the twilight hours. Jerry likes to do these in the twilight hours. Um, we are on episode 17, Jerry. That's incredible. We are incredible. And it's still as fresh as when we f- first did our very first podcast. I love it. I look forward to it, each uh, and every uh, one. Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's like, a, um, how to call it? Um <clears throat> Not necessarily fresh, but we definitely like we have so much more confidence in just what we say and what we do compared to that fo- first podcast. I I listened back to a few of the episodes a couple of weeks ago. Oh, did you? And I, I, yeah, and the first one, it's like, oh yeah, I can tell that you're you're a little bit nervous. Yeah. I was really nervous actually. Yeah, really. Nervous. Good. I'm not. I'm not at all. You know, it's funny now. Now I just don't even think about it. I set. I can set everything up. It's like second nature. Mm. Um. And, you know, I used to always have all these different thoughts in my head about, right, I need to say this on the podcast. No, I, for ages, I haven't had to do that at all. Yeah. Just and I did, en- I did enjoy the story that you told of your neighbor this week, who's asked if, are you still doing that podcast? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't reveal his name. I don't think I can reveal his name. I didn't ask him if I could. So I'll just, I'll use a code name for him. Um. <laughs> Go on, you're good with names. <laughs> okay, co- code name Pork Scratching. <laughs> I would love you, right? If you were, if you were a Top Gun like person that flew one of those planes, you would have a call sign like Pork Scratching. It That's would. You'd exactly have to. who you. It's got Maverick Goose, Iceman, Pork Scratching, <laughs> Scratch. You 100 percent would have that. As, that is ridiculous. Or crackling. Oh, oh crackling. crackling. Mm, crackling. <laughs> I mean, that's that's that could be taken in two ways, there, couldn't it? Because you could have crackling in terms of radio, <laughs> radio, radio signals. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah. No, I prefer yeah. pork scratching. I prefer pork scratching because yeah. it's just so left field and ridiculous. <laughs> it, it is. Works. So, so my friend, code name pork scratching, it would be funny when he listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Um, yes, he asked if this podcast is still going, and I said it very much is. Um, but he listened to a whole bunch of them um, when uh, when he was having his operation and he was in mm. hospital. Um, but uh, what I'm also excited about, and again, I don't know if I can mention their names. Oh, dear. I'll have to check on the chat, actually. Mm. Um, but three very dear, very close friends of mine from school uh, listen to this uh, regularly um, and religiously. And we... we have loads of chat about it on on whatsapp and so this is a big shout out big love to you all um dedicating this podcast to you if we can get one of one of them on the on here as well that would be really Mm. pretty cool yeah three of them (laughs) can you imagine oh can you imagine a five person podcast that would be amazing we could do uh we could do like a big collaborative effort and like just maybe pull like all previous podcasts like uh poignant questions and thoughts and stuff and just oh, see incredible. we're we're out here folks we are planning the podcast <laughs> in front of your very eyes without even getting into the current podcast that we're currently doing so yes um i have an advantage that my, a lot of my closest friends have <laughs> already i've already been on the podcast That's i've already true. had swanee and laura on so it's good and hooper um Ho- and Hoopsa. and we've got a and we've got a guest lined up that's going to give us some real insight into some other stuff, but I'm not going to spoil that as well. So i uh, really excited for some of that stuff. What about 100th episode? We get them all on, every single guest. Oh, 100th episode? 100th Blimey. episode. Can you imagine how many guests we're going to have on that by that point, though? Bear in mind, we've done 17 and we've had three guests. Yeah, I think we could easily get ten. Yeah, on the by a hundred. Yeah, I reckon we could get. I reckon we'll have ten by the time we hit twenty. By the time we hit thirty, 
Mm, maybe Ooh. 40. Maybe 40. Possibly 50. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be hailing with yourself. You're going to be yeah, hailing yeah, yeah. with yourself. Wait, 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 Oh dear. Uh, before we go too far off challenge, and what we will say, folks, is obviously the views on this podcast are our own and do not represent the company that we work for. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 it is as it is. Um, it is. And I'm going to try and get my words out today. Um, <laughs> have you got the uh, Have you got the file open today, Jerry? I do. You do. Have you noticed the additional point that I've put in on the, the introduction? Just no. Oh. <laughs> Life update of Dom. Uh, only just now, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I only put it on about five minutes ago. <laughs> Dom! Okay. I'll but it's fine. Coat. It's because this is like pure ad lib, which is what we're best at. Um, so just wanted to give uh, a little bit of a life update because we've both had an mm, interesting couple of months, I think is probably fair to say. Uh, yeah. mine, mine, so this is the first podcast I've done in two where I'm not sick. Yes, I'm <laughs> not sick. <laughs> So yes, I uh, my my August was not too bad, but the uh, the September one was a bit of a struggle for myself, where um, I have a had a suspected liver, uh, uh, I've forgotten the word now, a uh, liver infection. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so I am now back to fully fighting fit, um, and I have done my first few gym sessions this week. And oh my god, do I hurt after three months off? <laughs> gin, gym, gin. <laughs> <laughs> I heard <Only> gin. <laughs> hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. I do like gin. There you go. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. I rest uh, my case. No, it's so good. <laughs> I'm so relieved. You're you're, you're mm. feeling a lot better, Dom. Yeah, it annoys people now. I've got my brain back. <laughs> I can be annoying at work again. <laughs> good. Um, but you yourself have had a big change. You. Uh, have slightly less stress in your life, I would say, or different stress, shall we say? Different stress, but a welcome stress. So mm. yes, I've I've recently changed role internally mm. in, in my organisation, and um, something I felt very passionately about. I've been reading up about and studying for the last oh, six months, mm. um, talking about for the last sort of ten months, um, uh, and finally, well, yeah, eighteen, and finally <laughs> made it a reality. Um, and this was the end of week two in role and mm. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. It's fantastic. M myself and Jerry often have a phrase between ourselves, which used to get to the end of the week. I'm like, Oh, what a week. <laughs> and I, th I think it's fair to say that when we caught up, Oh, was it Wednesday? Was it Thursday? One of the two. Thursday, I think. It, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. You you said you were just as knackered, but it was a good knackered rather than a yes. than a oh my god, I want to murder people knackered. Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't quite use that phrasing, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I I'm I'm tired in a in a good way. It's nice. It's a it's a um as ridiculous as it might sound, it's like a satisfied tired. I feel mm. like I've done a really good day's work. Everyone else probably thinks I've done a crap job, but I think <laughs> I've done a good job. And that's what counts. I'm yeah. having fun, and, and that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. It's it's mm. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, we don't mention our company, even though it'd probably be very easy to find out who we work for if you did enough googling. Acme. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> Acme. Do, you, do you remember that? And was it Roadrunner and everything? It's Roadrunner and Wiley Road Coyote. Runner, or Wiley Coyote. It yeah. was. It was always like the Acme products, and yeah, you'd, Acme. Like, you'd like, like press the button for the TNT, <laughs> and then it wouldn't go off. So he'd run up to it and then press it again, and it wouldn't go off. Press it again, and then it press it a fourth time, and then it explode in his face <laughs> every time. Interestingly, I think that's probably my favourite Looney Tunes. Yeah, it is my characters. Meep, meep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the uh... others. Mm. Oh, yeah, you got Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn <laughs> is good though. <laughs> well, I say, boy. Well, I say, boy. <laughs> Appar apparently, it, it must be a thing on this on this show on our podcast. Or just in general, that I am very good at doing impressions of cartoon chickens. 
Foghorn Leghorn. Yeah, of course he's a chicken. <laughs> yeah. Foghorn Leghorn and the other one being, I don't want to be a part. I don't like gravy. I don't like gravy. <laughs> Which I can't think of the name of the chicken. Babs the chicken, that's Babs. it. Babs. The, Babs, Babs how chicken. can you forget? <laughs> Babs the I had, chicken. I had, to, I had to pull you up on being going all Babs the chicken on the last podcast. <laughs> I did. I yeah. did. You properly uh, went Babs the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> My life flashed before the others. <laughs> it were right. right. Boring. <laughs> That's it. Jerry's now gone for about five minutes, oh, folks. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Foghorn Leghorn is another one that was good. And I don't think, I'm just trying to think. I keep get I get them confused now, I think, with uh, Tom and Jerry, which is separate. But um, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck type thing. Actually, with Tom and Jerry Looney Tunes. I thought they were separate. Marvin the Martian was Looney Tunes. I'm going to put Bunny, Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd, Porky Pig, Porky Pig. You thought I was going to say son of a bitch. Oh my God, Elmer Fudd, Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, Yosemite Sam. Sylvester, Tasmanian Devil. Oh, of Pepe course, Le... yeah, Sylvester and Tweety. Sylvester and Tweety. Oh, God. Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, yes. Arriba, How can arriba. you forget? <laughs> <Adelaide. Adelaide. laughs> Could not get away with those cartoons in this day and age. No. They, obviously, we do not advocate for any racial <laughs> or, or sexual stereotypes that were portrayed in those. They were of a time. And I'm, I'm very happy that, like, Disney still play things like Mickey, the old Mickey Mouse, but they do put that caveat that these were of a time where it was yeah. deemed yeah. acceptable. And they would not be acceptable. But, uh, again, you, I enjoyed them as a as a... Uh, as a child, and you didn't quite understand the consequences, but yes. <laughs> Adler, Adler, Eve, Eve. <laughs> That's so good. God, there's so, loads. There's yeah. Rocky and Muggsy that you'd recognise. I'm trying to remember what they were from. Oh, I'm not sure. Rocky and Muggsy. Yeah, they they were from um, Wacky Racers. Wacky Racers. Well, Wacky Racers. <laughs> when Elmer Fudd then. <laughs> we're, we're, we're wacky, <laughs> wacky Racers. Um, what's that? Looney Tunes? I didn't think they were. I think so. I don't know. I think they are. It's come up on the list. But there's a whole bunch here I don't even recognise. Or has it come up just because it was the a similar animated television series around then? No, this is like the Michigan no, J. They're, they're Frog. Hanna Barra. Hanna ba- Hanna- oh, Hanna Barbera. Yeah, Barbera. Or Barbara, yeah. Barbara. Which which was the wacky races, but that has the Flintstones. Um, Yogi Bear, Top Cat, Top Cat, um, Top Cat. Oh, Sco- uh, for me, it was um, Scooby Doo was the big one. Scooby uh, Shaggy. And for some sh- I never understood this, but for some strange reason, the Scooby Doo live action movie is like a cult hit, even though it was a terrible movie. It was awful. But I haven't a- seen it. Have you not seen the live action no. Scooby Doo movie? Ooh. Isn't that with? Um- He's a, there's an actor that... 2002. Freddy, is it Freddie Prince Jr., isn't he? Yeah, Freddie Prince well, Jr. I, plays Fred Jones. See, I haven't seen... So what? whatever happened to him? What happened to Freddie Prince Jr.? Oh. Right? I when was know. the last time you saw him in anything? I think the last thing he was in was Scooby-Doo, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. I rest my case. I haven't seen uh, him for years. So... Uh, film wise, was he really? He was he in, in Star a... Wars. <clears throat> what? Yeah, it's probably yeah. a stormtrooper. <laughs> no, he played a or Jedi. An Ewok. Oh, did he? What? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, okay. So no. Oh, okay. So he's the voice of a Jedi. So you know when Ray Skywalker is. Um, picks up the lightsaber for the first time and she hears like a load of Jedi voices, which includes like Obi-Wan. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. his name? Apparently, one, Pr- uh, Freddie Prince Jr. played one of those Jedi, um, which I did not know. Um, but do you know what? In Star Wars Rebels, apparently he's played, I know his voice credit, voice, voice, yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's voice, yeah. he's voice for, oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's voice for loads of things like Mass Effect and, uh, Dragon Age. Oh, cool. I did not know him. 
Did not know that. Um, yeah, he's in the bar. So he's in recently Star Wars The Bad Batch, which I haven't watched yet. And he plays Canon Jarrus in The Jedi in Star Wars Rebels. Uh, what was did it? you know? Did you know there was a Scooby Doo 2? There was. Monsters, uh, Monsters Unleashed. Unleashed. Really? I don't think I've seen that. Um, but yeah, so he played. So Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo 2 were like 2002, 2004. Then he was in a, a lot of films which I don't recognise, but probably didn't do very well. One of these is called Shark Bait, and you can't say Shark Bait without going, hoo ha ha. Um, <laughs> I've seen um, uh, Finding Nemo, will know what I know on about that. Shark Bait, hoo ha ha. Oh, yeah, of course, he was in Friends as well, wasn't he? Was he really? Yeah, apparently. 2002. He plays Sandy, the one with the male nanny. Sandy Cheeks. Mm. But his most recent things, WWD. He's in. Uh, he's in wrestling. So what? And, wow! And and he won. He's won awards. He won awards for Dragon Age and Mass Effect Three. Um, and he was nominated for Scooby Doo. So that's yeah. So that's what happened. But yeah, okay. if you, so you've not seen. You've not seen the uh, the live action Scooby Doo film. No. Nah, one's put on your list. It's got like 32 on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not a great film, but it is a bit of a cult wow, classic Dom. now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like for the nostalgia and stuff, you just need to watch it. Um, I and... will put that on my priority list, but it'll be very low. <laughs> I mean, I can't very really low. argue. I've still not seen any of the films that people have told me to watch. So. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> we just have to go through this as standard. Predator. Yeah. Need to see you that. haven't seen it yet? No. Oh, the Rock. Mm-mm. Nope. I just don't believe it. No. <laughs> what was the other one? There was three. There was The Rock. There's uh, loads Predator. I've not seen. It's probably a Nicolas Cage film. Oh, Con Air. Yeah, Con I've yeah. not seen Con Air oh, either. What? What? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll watch Scooby Doo live action movie <laughs> once you've seen Con Air, The Rock, <clears throat> and Predator. And Pre- Predator. I mean, how can you not have seen? I know we go through this whole cycle every single time, but I just need to get it out of my system again because every time, every time we have this conversation, I just get I'm gobsmacked. You haven't seen Predator. I have not Sorry, seen Predator. Sorry, I just need to, need to get that out. Oh man, yeah, that's definitely definitely wonderful. so many classic lines from that film. So many classic lines. I've I probably know <laughs> half of them because. Because I uh, obviously I hold, my name is Dominic, and my uh, coaches for Taekwondo are both big fans of Arnie, so I constantly yes, get so Arnie quotes true. thrown at me. Because kinder- in Kindergarten Cop, the main child is called Dominic, so quite a few, <laughs> Dominic, come on, you idiot! What are they doing? More push-ups. <laughs> Who is a daddy, and what does he do? <laughs> That's what I used to get all the time. Well, I say used to get all the time. That's what I still get. <laughs> I was going to say, you still get. I still get that Excellent. on occasion. Brilliant. So, the only other one that they could also Got do it. is uh, Bruce Forsyth, but I can't do that, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> it's literally all I can do for that. Nice to see you. To see you nice. See you nice. In peace, Bruce Forsyth. That was the worst, can I say, even I'll admit, that was the worst Bruce Forsyth <laughs> impression. <laughs> I've never heard. I'm not gonna. I'm not even going to attempt to, to pass judgment. That was I'm shockingly to bad. <laughs> no. Do we want to actually do this podcast topics that we've got written down? No, I think we should wrap it <laughs> we up. Should wrap we should wrap it up. this. <laughs> That's all golden content right there. <laughs> Put your electric Discord. blanket on. Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Okay. Burrito. Right. Food of the. Go speaking of burritos, let's go into the food of the month. Uh, so I have gone for my controversial opinion later on, uh, but potatoes seems to be the best. <laughs> this seems like what I've gone for. You, I, look, what is it with you and potato? You're always picking on potato. I, What's potato ever done to you? Pot- right. Two things, right? Potatoes are overrated. Like everyone's like, oh my God, potatoes are so good. Blah, 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 blah. And They're vers- versatile, don't th- I get that. But you just, when you have them with every meal, in some kind of form, it's just like, I think potatoes are overrated. The other thing is they do, they absolutely 
ruin my body. It just makes me so bloated. I don't know what it is about potatoes, but they, they just make me ruined. So potatoes, overrated. And they're so easy to get wrong. Okay. So I think maybe it's not potato. Maybe it's not potato. Maybe it's not. Potato. Maybe you're getting bloated from all the exercise, and <laughs> all the water. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Right? It's a it's a theory. It's a th- it is a theory. Is it a theory? No. I I just and I will hold my hands up that probably most of the population do not agree with me. But potatoes are overrated. You you'll be right on the. I mean. There'll be people listening to this screaming, mm. screaming at their phones. Yeah. This is why or I love the podcast. Listening this it. is why I love the podcast, because I get to show, yeah, say some controversial opinions and listen to everyone go, what? <laughs> yeah, but th- this is the kind of thing that would th- this, you're inviting death threats right, and all sorts. You start, you start picking on potatoes, which, you know, we're talking chips. Overrated. Crisps. Overrated. Right, yeah, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> overrated, overrated. I think P- people are gonna people are gonna put like blood covered potatoes <laughs> through your letterbox. <laughs> I'm not just gonna have potatoes thrown at me, <laughs> and they're quite yeah, hard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How did he die? You're gonna have stoning <laughs> by potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have a chip nailed to your front door. <laughs> yeah, have it. There's a warning. How dare you? Oh, dear. So the first part of the question I have written is, what do you have on your jacket potato? Um, (laughs) I have read your note, which I laughed a lot when I read this one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay, let's start with what do you have on your jacket potato? So it's got to be butter. You've got to have butter and you've got to have cheese. And And then anything else that you want on there. As long as it's not pineapple <laughs> or any form pineapple. of fruit. I was about to, I was about to say. <laughs> my Oh, actually, code name Pork Crackling. Mm. So he, he's also talking about putting uh, banana on pizza. Oh, what is wrong? Like I, I... As well as pineapple. <sighs> that, what do you make of that? I can accept pineapple. Banana hurts my soul. <laughs> just it doesn't just hurt me it hurts my soul that's soul destroying I, there you go pork crackling i could only accept that if it was specifically a pizza that is made to be sweet so like instead of so for example like you know if instead of like a, a not like a paste you have a, you know you've got a dough mixture oh, yeah. and then you spread it yeah. with like nutella and then you put like bananas and marshmallows and Stuff like that instead of cheese and tomato. So instead of barbecue sauce or tomato sauce, you use Nutella as the base, right? That might be acceptable. I could accept bananas as part of a sweet thing, but bananas, <laughs> bananas and cheese, I can't see going. Oh, oh, actually, when you br- oh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, and cheese is like one of the most godly foods known to man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to argue that. So. If if something can ruin cheese, like because pineapple does go with cheese, because you get them on the little sticks. Do you know what? I'll be damned. You're right. right. Pineapple and cheese. You always have those on a cocktail stick. stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Which were always at British parties, and I've never understood why they became yeah. a thing. But I don't know. They just they've always been a thing, haven't they? You also, but used, you're right. Used to put like um, <clears throat> is it onions? A bit of small. Onions. Yeah, you used to get little. Yeah, a little pickle. You could get cheese and a little pickled onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also a thing. Mm. So yeah, but yeah, you wouldn't have a cocktail stick with cheese and banana. Yeah, that that's definitely a bridge too far. Mm. Code name pork scratching might need to be uh, <laughs> might need to be renamed <laughs> to code named mushy banana, <laughs> which is vile. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies in <laughs> advance, but please come on our podcast. <laughs> He'll listen to this at some point. Yeah, we need to get him on. Um, yeah, I, anything else above that? I'm, I, I'll have anything with jacket potato apart from baked beans. Oh, I, I, I had a funny feeling you're not a baked, you're a baked beans hater. I can't eat baked beans. Yeah, I can't eat yeah. baked beans. Yeah, at all. I think. Um... For me, on jacket potato, I think the only thing that I think I've had before, which I was like, 
that's quite nice, but I think most people would hate it. Is I quite like tuna on a baked jacket potato. Oh no, the tuna's good. Mm. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, of tuna's tuna. good. I like. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. Yeah. Generally, the staples: butter and cheese. <laughs> butter and Important cheese, yeah. food but you, creams: no. butter and cheese. <laughs> yes, but no, you're right about the tuna. In fact, tuna. I'd go so far as to say tuna, tuna and sweet corn, mm. and cheese. Mm. On jacket potatoes, it almost becomes like a, ja- uh, a tuna melt mm. on in a hot potato. I, I would go so far as to say, you're right, I'd go so far as to say that's the best. Yeah, that's probably the one of the top, best. Top, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, ba- yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm an, I'm okay with baked beans, but I don't think it's top. No, I've had chili, I've had chili con carne and cheese. Oh, yeah. Or like... And sweet corn. Anything that's like... Or bolognese. I have had bolognese on top of yeah, it. Bo- yeah, yeah. So basically, bolognese. You're using the jacket potato as a replacement for pasta. Yes. Yeah, bolognese with melted yeah. cheese. So I've, I've had leftover bolognese sauce on the jacket potato with yeah. And with, if you've with if you've reheated cheese. bolognese or chili, it always tastes better after it's been reheated it in the microwave. There yeah, is it does. there must be science behind it, but it is a fact, and nobody can argue with that. So I've got a friend of mine who. Um, if you're going to tell me that who, they don't like it after it's been reheated, they're wrong. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is really interesting. So he he um, uh, he used to make curries. Mm. So um, so he's an Asian friend mm-hmm. of mine. He used to make make curries and then let let the curry cool down. So he'd make like a lamb curry, mm. and he'd spend hours making it. I mean, it would this this curry would simmer, and uh, it'd be amazing. But he would he would let the curry um cool down then you'd put it in the fridge you wouldn't eat it that night mm. or that day you'd warm it up the next day and then eat it mm. and, he, and and he said that curries always taste better mm. the next day all of them do food generally yeah food generally tastes better the next day uh there are certain foods like i i prefer pizza like straight out like food pizza pizza the next day is yeah i don't like cold yeah. pizza yeah, the next day is okay like it's still pizza so it you know in terms of levels of yeah. food it's up there but pizza needs to be eaten immediately yeah i agree with like that. get in my belly um, like i need pizza get <laughs> <laughs> get in my belly get in my belly yeah cheese on toast you'd have to eat that straight away hmm in the same for the same yes. reason as pizza. Yeah, yeah, um, um, uh, yeah. That's probably the, uh, one of the few foods that if you you melt cheese and then let it cool again, that's it does. It's not nowhere near yeah, as ha- nice. No, so you literally you're on the clock, mm. aren't you? Yes, you are on the clock. I need to bury my toast. face in you it. Could, yeah, <laughs> face plant in it. You can't, there's no messing around. Don't piss about. Get everything ready. Get your plate, cutlery, everything ready. Yeah. Literally, as soon as you pull it out from under the grill. Yeah. You need to shove that in your cake hole. Yeah, and then you have to get go, in my belly. Then you have to go, as it's too hard to eat it, which we all do. And then, and then you you suck on an ice cube for the next three days because you've got massive blisters on your palate. Oh dear! I have just realised that during this podcast already, I have done or we have done Yorkshire accent for Babs the chicken. We've done an Austrian accent for Arnold Schwarzenegger and a Scottish accent for Fat Bastard from. That what's foghorn Mexican. leghorn? Yeah, we did. He's from the deep south. Yeah, deep <clears> south, <throat> and we've done a Mexican one for that. Oh man! <laughs> to say that we're not men um, of many talents, Jerry, I think would be an incorrect statement. Not that incorrect. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no talents other than ridiculousness. No, <laughs> it's the joviality yeah. aspect of our what podcast. Else did you want? Um, the second additional note that we had is, do you eat the skin or not? And Jerry, you've got to just say, what you just said. <laughs> I only eat the skin. I, was, I read that and I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but only That's actually not far off the truth. Really? No, I will eat the whole thing, but the skin is my favorite. Okay. Interesting. Like, cause I'll eat the whole thing. Yes. But I know people that will like scoop out the inside yeah, scoop out. as if it's like yeah. an ice cream bowl and leave the skins there. Yeah. That's like, um, that's like the equivalent of eating the mint fondant mm. 
out of an after eight <laughs> and just leaving a chocolate shell. I was more thinking, more thinking it's it's a, it's equivalent <laughs> of people that don't eat the crusts off bread. They're weak and deserve to go first if there's ever a culling. <laughs> Wow, that's dark. You've gone <laughs> proper dark. I blame Laura for that. I that blame Laura. Her dark humour's rubbing Jeez. off on me after the last few days. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> it's all coming out now. So, look, I wanted to go for something just so ridiculous. Like, how would you? How would you eat all of the? How would you, you leave the potato the and just eat the skin? But also, yes. How would you? Like, I suppose you could cut it in half and suck out the middle. Well, you could you could scoop out the insides and then throw the ins- all the insides in the bin, mm. and then just, then eat, just the skin. eat the skin. But it, but it's the after eight bit that I'm fascinated. Yeah, by. chop it in half and suck it out like a straw. No, I was thinking you poke a little hole in the top, mm. and then you just sort of very. I mean, it would be a painstaking <laughs> process. It would take hours, but you with a needle you just dip. You just scoop out. <laughs> just dip it in the fondant. <laughs> Until it literally is just a chocolate shell. Oh, dear. <laughs> I've got just images of you holding up. <laughs> <laughs> and for our um, uh, aud- aud- audio listeners, I am sim- <laughs> <laughs> I'm simulating uh, a tongue out concentrating Jerry trying to lick out the insides of an after eight. <laughs> there you go. You're also the type of person that would have an after eight at 7 p.m. <laughs> I would, and I have, and in fact, rarely have I eaten an after eight after eight, unless it's you, you unless eight in the morning counts. <laughs> it's always it's after eight at some point, isn't it? At some point, it's like it's it's happy yeah. hour somewhere. It's it's after eight somewhere. I just remembered a phrase that I I, I saw earlier on today, and it was <laughs> adulthood is trying to figure out whether it's too late to have a coffee or whether it's too early to have alcohol. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now, what was the other one that you said as well? You said adulthood is getting a chocolate cake. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, what was it? Yeah, you said it. It's, it's basically something like, like, if you just fancy chocolate cake, you you can just go out and buy yourself mm. a chocolate cake. Yeah. There's nobody. Just... But being responsible is n- knowing you just can't eat the whole yes. thing or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Being an yeah, adult is, yeah, yeah. is realizing that you can go and get at any point yourself a whole chocolate cake. Being responsible yeah. is not eating the whole damn thing in one sitting. That's the one. Yeah, that's I the one. I would like to say that's I'm not a responsible adult. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a box of Jaffa cakes, I'm eating all of them. Oh, Love Jaffa. But interestingly, 10 Jaffa cakes is only uh, 647 calories. Is it really? Yes. The Jaffa cakes are actually really light on calories. Oh, God. It's, that's not helping mm. matters, mm. Dom. You're not helping me. I mean, here. if you eat 97 of them, then yes, you've got a bit of a problem. In fact, I'd probably tell you how many calories a single Jaffa cake is because I probably have it written down. Uh... By the way, um, friend of mine from school now yeah actually went and bought a pack of um the double uh double cream oreos oh double stuffed oreos yes double stuffed oreos i'm just having a look at the chat how many calories do you reckon for a, a single uh, for a single jaffa cake is it f- i would say f- uh is it 25 something? No, like that? double that. 46. 46? Yeah. Okay. Still good, though. Yeah. A two finger Kit Kat is 200 and something, I think. Yeah. 46 calories. Yeah. Then my friend put, I blame you for this purchase today, Jerry. And there's a photo <laughs> of double cream Oreos. They. Nice. They clearly are sensible people, and they are the best. They are. However, they are. They, on the other <laughs> hand, uh, they, on the other this hand, is going to taste of guilt. How many uh, have more? Uh, a double stuffed Oreo has seventy calories, and has less protein in. Oh, well, yeah. On the basis that it doesn't contain as much protein, I think I'm just going to stop eating them. Because <laughs> I think, oh, do you know what? I need a protein fix. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Shall I have some meat? 
No, I'll have some Oreos. <laughs> no, Jaffa Cakes, it's got more in it. <laughs> and less calories. Either way. Either way. What? I, d- I didn't think there'd be any protein I mean, at it is, all. It is 3% of an Oreo. Yeah, but even 3%, what, what constitutes the protein? That's nuts. That would be the egg. Oh, so it's not nuts. <laughs> It'll be the egg. It's no, no. <laughs> it's just some sort of yolk. A Jaffa cake is 5%. Uh, <laughs> well, that's great. There you go. It's got everything you need, including protein. Um, the second part of our food of the month question. I'm just moving on now because otherwise, we, I've just realised it's like half an hour. We're not even a ten, we're hardly no, no. for a podcast, and we've gone such off tangent. This is the most random one. Got 15 pages of notes to go through. <laughs> I hope you're ready for the long haul, folks. Um, the best form of potatoes that is not mashed, by the way. If anyone says mash, that's the worst. Yeah, that's upsetting. If they say so mashed. I think I wrote. Mashed, chipped, crisped, jacket, roasted. And then you've put a word that I don't even know how to pronounce. Dauphinese? Dauphinoise. Dauf- Dauphinoise. Dauphinoise. I don't know how that is. Dauphinoise. Well, Dauphinoise. Actually, I think you're right. You don't pronounce it yet. It's Dauphinoise. Yeah. Dauphinoise yeah, potato. French. I don't think I've even spelt it correctly, but it's Dauphinoise. Dauph- and then Hasselback. <laughs> it now knows how to... <laughs> it now... It's now got into the habit of... Uh... Oh, it's oh okay. This is where you like layer it, stuff and moir, isn't it? Yeah, you layer it with cream. Yeah, you you put cream and cheese oh, and other stuff. See, that's cheating because the, the, the cakes, the, the, whatever. <laughs> it's relatively straightforward, but it leaves oh, to press overnight. Ugh, effort. Really? Yeah. What? To be fair, right, okay. and also like half of the. Half of the mixture is milk and cream, so I'd argue that it's not quite as much potatoes. Whereas, like, potatoes is potatoes. Like, you, you can't do anything with roast potatoes. But that's fine. Yeah, and that's I don't true. know what Hasselback ones are. So Hasselback is is you, you cut about 15,000 different grooves oh. into each potato. So it's like connected crisps. Yeah. <sighs> Genius, Dom, you're a genius. Mother, do you, you are a have you, genius? Can you hear Jerry on this, mother? Jerry is telling me that I am a genius. <laughs> He's a genius. He's a genius. Absolute genius. Anyone that comes up with a, a connected <laughs> bag of crisps is that's just a sign of pure genius. Yes. <laughs> let it be let, let it, it be, be noted no. for the record. I can hear all of my friends <laughs> and my mum all screaming, going, no, don't tell him this, Jerry. He doesn't need his ego inflated anymore. He's a... <laughs> He's a goddamn <laughs> genius. <laughs> oh, what's that from? <laughs> I can I picture remember. the scene. It's from, from somewhere. somewhere. Oh. But anyway, best form of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> um... We could be here for a while. Roast. Oh, I love roast potatoes. How many? Yeah, I love roast potatoes. How many, okay, so how many can we choose? Or, or, or is are we going to make this really difficult and so you can only choose one? <laughs> well, I mean, we can go through and like sort of maybe rank uh, them in terms of like which one we think's the the best. Like the worst is mashed, and the best I think is probably roasted. Yeah. <sighs> roast. I so I agree. Roast or chip. So chips, like you can't. If you do, you can't really do roast potatoes wrong. If you get them crispy enough on the outside, they can't really go wrong. Whereas you can have soggy chips. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, like it's probably roasted than chips, and and that includes like oven chips or fries or uh, wedges. I think I, just yeah, generally th- that's a, that's a good. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you. Yeah, I agree. Roasted, chipped. Uh, I, I would have to. I'd have to say crisp. Yeah, crisp. Because I yeah, love crisps, crisps. I would probably put there. I love crisps. Um, although the Hasselback would probably be equal for me because I'd, I'd. I'm intrigued to try it. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're mm. very nice. Uh, 
I'm not that fussed on hash brown. I do like saute. So I'd say, I'd say after crisp saute, then mm-hmm. Hasselback, then uh, hash brown, mm-hmm. then <sighs> mashed it at the bottom for me, like hundred percent at the bottom. Yeah, D- Duffin was, and then and then right down yeah. at the very bottom. So there's that you've got hundreds of slots that you can put in yeah. all the times. Uh, any and any t- and any type of potato is better. Raw potato is better than any mashed type potato. potato. <laughs> yeah, raw. <laughs> Even if that potato is. was lobbed yes. at me by a trebuchet, like it would be more comfortable than mashed potato. Still covered with soil, <laughs> yeah. just out the ground. Yeah, uh, sprouting. Honestly, fresh out the ground. I would I would eat a potato. I'd take that yeah. over mash. Not a fan. Oh, Not sprouting. Fan. Ugh. Yeah, and, and, and right. I, I agree with you on hash browns. I think that I think they're okay, but they're not overrated. again overrated as most things in most yeah. potatoes are. Do you <laughs> think sweet potatoes are better or worse? They're definitely not better. Really, you don't think sweet potatoes are better? No, sweet potato better. fries are better than normal potato fries. Sweet? Oh. Mm. Steady. Mm. Steady. Take it <laughs> easy. <laughs> all right, we've all had a drink. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think... Yeah, it might be pushing it there. So, I love sweet potato fries. Mm. Don't get me wrong. But it's not quite the same. Okay. So it's like seeing when you're watching a film, it's like watching a film with Owen Wilson <laughs> and Luke Wilson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So sweet potato fries. There's nothing wrong with Luke Wilson. Yeah. But it's not Owen. It's but not he's, not, he's, he's not, he's not, he's not Owen Wilson. Wilson. Fair enough. So you go, oh, that yeah. was pretty cool, but he's yeah, not yeah, Owen yeah. Wilson. Yeah. Right. Wow. So, so <laughs> wow. yeah, exactly. So, Chips, you know, normal potato chips, fries are mm. wow. Whereas sweet potato fries are just <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Owen Wilson. It's Owen Wilson versus Luke Wilson. And I like them both. <sighs> trying to think of other actor or actress. I mean, to be fair, like with sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes can only really be chipped. <laughs> like I can't imagine that they... You can't have a you could have a roast maybe, but a jacket sweet potato that that seems a bit weird. Oh no, I've had mashed sweet potato. Yeah, I've had no, mashed. Sweet potato. Just, I don't like mash. I don't like mash. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like mash. Um, so I, yeah, because like generally you'll have like something like Swede or butternut squash roast sweet potato and potato, like mashed is like way down there, but all of them roasted, like God's tier food, like clearly. Like roast butternut <laughs> yeah, squash yeah. is the best vegetable. Yeah. I can't yeah. think of anything better. Yes, roasted butternut squash. Squash. I can't even say squash. It. Friday. It's a long week. That squash. Sasquatch. That is. Squash yeah. Squash is just such Sasquatch. an amusing word. Sasquatch. I don't know why that's so <laughs> funny. Squatch. Squatch. <laughs> that must squatch. Like not not even the sasquatch, but the squatch. Bit. <laughs> that must. Sasquatch. That must be. That needs to be a thing. Like squatch. That needs to be like a, a, a Gen Z term for something because that's just genius. Yeah, that's genius. That's gonna be like when you drop something, or you you step yeah, on something, and it sort of squishes out from under your shoe. It's that oh, I just squatched that. That just got yeah. squatched. <laughs> squatched. Such a ridiculous. Um, I can't believe we've we've compared different types of potato to the yeah. Wilson brothers. Uh, we, but then you could pick on Baldwin, couldn't you? You got Alec oh, Baldwin a bit too and soon. Billy Baldwin. With recent news. Oh yeah, sorry. Do you know what? <laughs> I, didn't even think, do you know, I didn't even think of that. Oh my <laughs> god! Are you going to no, have to I'm bleep that? that. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I actually yeah, didn't even I, think that, of that. that, that as soon as you said his name, I was like, mm, no, "Is that a bit too soon?" Are you? Ooh, you're not quite thinking, yeah, are you? I forgot so, about that. No. No, I'm not no, thinking. No, it's, Let's move okay, on. Let's quick, move quick, on. Quick, questions. Let's go. Okay, so so let's do it. we we are this as you may have noticed, folks, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, but Jerry distracted me. We, 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 oh, oh, that's you right. Yeah, you're right. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. So it was last podcast where you were doing a thing where you were st- oh no, it was a one with Hooper where you stood there like this. Not moving. You know? and <laughs> I was gonna. Was we gonna had loads of internet issues, and I was like, "Was he still there? Is he still there? Is he still there?" <laughs> oh, that's um, brilliant. We have no theme for this month, so this is back to basics, pure, distinct, and jovial. Which I'm hoping you're recognising is fairly distinct and fairly jovial. So, um, I'm having a whale of a time. I don't care what you lot think. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> awesome. I love it. So, point. Well, look, hang about. But yeah, but this is balancing out. Sorry, can I just mm. say before we go into this? This is balancing out previous episode, yeah. which is quite yeah. heavy. We were talking about, yeah, we were talking about the spooky stuff, spooky topics. Yeah, as we we're in spooky season, yeah. uh, two days, well, three days we from Halloween. Well, so more important yeah. date on um, Halloween is is my Taekwondo anniversary. So, Ooh, how many years this year? Seventeen. Wow. And wow, boy, jolly, my hips can feel God, those that's... seventeen years. <laughs> so, hey ho. Uh, yeah, so poignant questions, com- going to be completely random. We've got eight today, um, and then we've got a few more um, uh, other things. I've got some interesting facts and some idioms to look at. Uh, but the first poignant question, and it's I've just written down Channel 4 TV shows. Um, but I mean oh, like right. 1990s Channel 4 TV shows. So Brainiac, Scrap Heap Challenge, and those types of things. Yeah, that's the, the golden, golden age. age. That's the golden age of Channel um, Four. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, you can go, you can give your opinion first, and yeah, I'm nostalgic for it. When I think of Scrap Heap Challenge and Brainiac, it makes me think of all that. I think what was um. No, no, this is where I have to be careful because. It reminds me of a whole load of other programs that they used to watch in that era, but I don't know if they were Channel 4. Mm. Well, we can find out, can't we? So, Red Dwarf wasn't Channel 4, was it? It could have been. It could have been. I... Oh, I can't spell it. Then, then uh, what was it? Fort Boyard was that channel? Uh, so Red Dwarf was a BBC show, but Fort Boyard, BBC. yeah, Fort Boy, yeah, Fort Boyard, that, right? That must be Channel Four. No, so Fort Boyard was Channel Five. I suppose we could just go for like nineteen ninety. Oh, yeah, what? Nine, it's because it, yeah, nineteen ninety. Let's, let's go nineties TV shows. So like things like The Crystal Maze. Fort Boyard, Crystal Maze, and then Scrappy Challenge. Like the similar ones to oh that were God. things like. Uh, what else did they have uh, around that era? But all those times, like, what was the one? What was the cookery program with the? You had to either everyone in, in the audience had to put up their cards, and it was either a pepper. Oh, a green pepper um, or a red ready, tomato. steady, cook with um, Haynes, Ainsley, Ainsley ready, Harrier. steady, cook. Yes. yes. Now we're yes. talking. Yeah. Now we're cooking on gas. <laughs> now we're, yeah. Now we're cooking on gas. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. You've got. Oh, what else was there? Uh, Quantum Leap. That, that's no, that's going to say that's so. that's a bit before me. That's something my my mum used to watch too. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue yeah. with that though. Actually, that's fair enough. I, I you know, thing, I'm going to say it again, Dom, and it is frightening as I hear these words come out of my mouth. I was born in 1972. <laughs> 1972 oh, wow. wow wow um but they had loads of you're right they had there were loads of programs like that which um i think it was a decade of sort of different game shows mm, and quiz yeah. shows wasn't it yeah and 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 all of them elite like all of them i'm just trying to see if i can find them. i'm trying to think of Oh my god! Oh Robot yes, Wars. now Do you remember Robot yes. Wars? Okay, BBC uh, Robot Wars was, but yes, yeah, was that Ro- BBC Robot was Wars it? BBC. Um, I'm 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 percent convinced. Oh god, who was who was the who was the um, presenter? What was his name? Because oh. uh, currently at the moment, it's because it's still going, as far as I know. But it's and it was it's Dara O'Brien that does it at the moment, I believe. Or did the most recent one? But who was the nineteen nineties oh, okay. one? Okay, still going. Jonathan wow. Pierce. He was the commentator. Uh, yeah, it was BBC and Channel. Oh, it might have been Channel Five back then. Oh, I can't think what the five. name of the presenter was. Craig Charles. Craig Charles. Yes. Craig Charles. So you're talking about Craig Charles. So. 
How about Takeshi's, Takeshi's Castle? Castle? Yes. Now we are talking about pr- the original TV shows. Um, yeah, the OG. Oh man, <laughs> Takeshi's Castle. Never had a spell and that. Uh, what was the other one? I was thinking. Um, see what you see. So we're going to do another accent now. See what you see. See what you see. What's Mister Chips doing? What's Mister <laughs> Chips doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what no. was that? Diddly, 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 oh, diddly. God, I can't remember. Catchphrase. Catchphrase. <laughs> Catchphrase. What's Mr. Chips yes. doing? What's Mr. Chips doing? <laughs> Such a bad <laughs> That is so bad. That is so bad. That was on my favourite. They had the word job. Job. So the letters yeah. J O B. And then they had a hand <laughs> pushing down on it. <laughs> And you go, okay, everyone's thinking, <laughs> and you want <laughs> Jerry, my mother but listens to this podcast. Was. <laughs> it was, yeah, but wait one second, wait one second, all right? You all go, get your minds out of the gutter, because the answer for that was actually holding down a job. Oh, yeah. That was what it was. So the hand is holding the job down. That's the job was trying. But everybody was just going, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> So what's Mr. Chips right? doing? I don't know what what's you're Mr. thinking. What's Mr. What's <laughs> Mr. Chips? What is Mr. Chips doing? Oh, dear. What are you doing? Oh dear. <laughs> Takeshi's Castle. Because as soon as you said um Craig Charles, I oh, thought yeah. I thought of Takeshi's Castle because his genius. commentary on, on Takeshi's genius. Castle was Absolute the best. Genius. And I've just got images where they've got the golden footballs in the in the um in that, well, yes. they now use them as like you know shooting aids and things like that to fire the balls in to do headers and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, just firing them at people. <laughs> oh, and do you remember when he say, "Oh, it's the lady's favourite, yeah. General Lee." <laughs> yeah. Remember that? So good. Love it. And it, love it's because it was so castle. cheap. Like it wasn't like you, yeah. they didn't pretend it was, it was like f- this really big, expensive, extravagant thing. It was deliberately cheap, and that's what made it so good. And Scrappy yeah. Challenge was genius. Uh, look, yeah, because everything was papier-mâché, mm, yeah. wasn't it? It was all papier-mâché. Yeah. I loved it. I, I was hooked. I used to watch every episode of yeah. Takeshi's Castle. It used to drive everyone nuts. <laughs> oh, I loved man. it. I missed we Takeshi's proper, Castle. Proper, proper television there. That was the OG. Second point of question. <laughs> Could aliens negotiate roundabouts? <laughs> <laughs> simple no would they need to no one can <laughs> uh, no <laughs> you got you got craft that can go from naught to 10,000 miles an hour in less than a second why why do they have to adhere to the <laughs> rules of a roundabout to be fair, you could you could need... change this I've... to could humans negotiate roundabouts, and I'm pretty sure that about fifty percent of them would be a no as well, <laughs> based on experience. Well, you're talking global global, global population. population. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say you less than fifty percent. Oh, I reckon twenty percent. I mean, like, for example, when you go to the states, all the road, everything's yes. grid form, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much, or mm. long straight roads. Um. You know, you get roundabouts in France, mm. for example. Yeah, that's, Europe tends to cool. still use roundabouts. Mm. Europe, Europe tends, yeah. But for example, somewhere like America, they'll be like, <laughs> what the, the fringe is the roundabout. <laughs> what the print? What do I do here? <laughs> well, that was an easy question. Could aliens negotiate roundabouts? No, there you... is the answer to that. No. Well, I, I know. I, I actually think what you said is more poignant. Could the the human population. In the poignant questions. No, do do they even need mm. to? What do would aliens even give a yeah. shit about? I am very roundabout. curious no. though if you showed an alien the a picture of the magic roundabout in Swindon and said, "How would you negotiate that in a vehicle?" <laughs> to be fair, the them. magic roundabout throws most people. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. think they'd have be stumped ever... by that. I think they would, all of a sudden yeah. they would have respect for us. Now, you don't species. have to admit this because it you might have ad- means you might have admitted that you've been to Swindon, which is. <laughs> um, have you ever had to do the magic roundabout? Oh, I haven't. Oh, you're a lucky, lucky person. Or unlucky. I think it's a great roundabout. It's brilliant. But... Yeah, but you've described <laughs> no, it to me. I don't know. Most people don't want it. to do it once it's been described to you. Um, it feels like that. 
In fact, I think I've got a mental <laughs> block about it now, Dom. In fact, I think you've kind of instilled fear of the fear magic of the magic roundabout, roundabout in me. Magic yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd program it into my sat nav. <laughs> From root, avoid, avoid magic roundabout. Magic roundabout. Um, Why am I yawning? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> I have yeah, this effect. I, I, yeah. Again, <laughs> shall we just? It's going to be a blame Jerry <laughs> podcast today, isn't it? <laughs> That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'll take it on the chin. Oh dear. Right. Uh, <laughs> number three: TV adverts. Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> Honestly, so your the the timing mm. of this question couldn't have been better or worse, depending mm. on how you look at it. But. So I've been watching a lot of stuff on YouTube and it's insane mm. that the adverts on YouTube are insane. So you, I'll go to a video that's only four minutes long and 30 seconds into it, it'll be like, <laughs> hey, it's Grammarly. And then you go, okay, uh, skip ads. Another 30 seconds. Hey, it's Grammarly. Yeah, you're showing me the same advert that I watched 30 seconds ago. And then you skip the ads. Another minute, hey, it's Grammarly. And like, seriously, <laughs> have YouTube lost the plot? Have they absolutely so it's, lost it's the plot? It's interesting. So I, I am going to hold my hands up. I am an ad blocker user purely because I think the internet is unusable without an ad blocker. Right? And it works on YouTube, so I don't see adverts. And it is brilliant. Right? Uh, you and, and I need chat. to have uh, I can tell you what words. I can tell you. Yeah. Have a yeah. chat at some point next week um okay. and what's interesting is at one point i did pay for youtube premium to get rid of adverts as well right which is like and i was oh, yeah, and i was course. looking at it and, yeah. and i was thinking about the amount of times that i spend on youtube versus like netflix for example and i was like i actually probably watch about 40 hours of youtube it's almost worth me getting a premium subscription for it but you know ad blocker still currently works and until it um, and until google actually released the v3 update then i won't be doing i you know i'm gonna keep to the ad blocker and people may go oh that's morally wrong i'm like i don't mind advertising when it's subtle right i don't mind like i wouldn't mind if it was a pop-up in the bottom or like it was a, a sponsored video or something like that yeah it, used, I cannot... to be, it used to be that you used to get the little thing and you could you could hit the x but it used to come up yeah. it didn't stop yeah yeah. The video that you were watching, and like every and, minute it stops. And to be honest, like often, like I've deliberately not used companies that have adverts like that because I'm like, because you put adverts on my programs, so I'm actually going to avoid you as a consumer. The other thing um, that's interesting is that the rest of the whole internet is not usable without an ad blocker. The worst website, the Top Gear website. Now, I'm a big car lover, but their website is unusable if you don't have an ad blocker. And the reason being is because they have a giant banner that ends up taking 50% of the real estate and it doesn't have a close oh, button. Oh, that's... And it's feasibly... No, no it, it doesn't. doesn't. You can't... And Joking. it's like... king. Uh, mate, I, like, I'm not, I'm not going what? to go on your website when your ads take up. If it's like a, a subtle ad in the corner or something like that, then I'll go, oh... Oh, maybe that's an advert. Okay, I'm not interested. Or actually, maybe I'm interested, right? And it gets worse. Like, obviously, apps and things like that, you can't prevent adverts. Instagram is getting really bad for it, where, like, if I'm scrolling through my timeline, every other post is an advert. It's not of somebody I've actually wanted to follow. And they've just changed their website now that it, it now is including adverts and has done this thing. So like Instagram used to just be a chronological order of, of photos, which is exactly what I want. And instead they now have this thing that goes, Oh, you're caught up. Do you want to go and see older posts? I want to be able to scroll through everything. Just it's called a timeline, put a timeline with your bloody photos. It's really <laughs> not difficult. <laughs> Would that be the same user experience if anyone was to access my OnlyFans account? <laughs> no, because you pay for an OnlyFans, so there's no adverts on it. <laughs> Don't. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What's in? What's interesting? That's reassuring. Is, you know, Netflix are now introducing a lower tier to with adverts in. So you can pay, I think, so instead of like eight ninety nine a month, you can pay like four ninety nine a month to have Netflix with adverts. What? 
and I've noticed this on Amazon, Amazon Prime. So Amazon Prime does it as well. But, oh. Right back in the good back in the good old days. So I've got smart TV. Back in the good old days, you used to go onto Amazon Prime and you'd say, "Oh, is this is this Prime? Is it included with Prime or not?" You either have to pay for it, mm. or it comes with your Prime subscription. Simple as that. Yeah. Now it's, oh, uh, why don't you can watch this, but with Stars Play. What 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 the fuck is Stars Play? You can watch this. It's free V with ads. Yeah. But this device doesn't support it. What? Yeah. So now I can't even... What are you talking about? Yeah. It's just... It's bonkers. There's literally like about 500 layers of different options of things. Oh, you can pay for some of this. Pay pay for this. Don't have to pay for that, but it's got adverts. Oh, no, but this device doesn't support it. But you can only watch it on the mobile. But it can only be an Android. It can't be... It's like, do you know what? Do you not know forget it? Forget it. Yeah. I'll just pick yeah. up a book and I'll just read. And it's, How about it's that? interesting. It's getting to the stage now where I actively am tempted to discontinue products because they put so much adverts. So I will never buy a Samsung TV because it has adverts on it. Like the, and Samsung are putting adverts in their smart TVs. I'm like, absolutely not. What the fringe? What the fringe, exactly. What, oh, what the, the absolute fringe? fringe. <laughs> what oh, the actual dear. fringe? So TV okay. adverts in the bin. Kobe. Hell yeah. If that was Room 101, that'd be the first thing in. Yes. And room another 101. Another TV show about that. Probably, another I think that classic. Was, uh, noughties rather than 90s. Was it? Yeah, I think you're right, actually. No, you are right. Yeah. You are right. That wasn't 90s. Yeah, that wasn't 90s. Point at question number four. Have you ever seen <laughs> baby pigeons? All the time. No, I've I never seen a baby pigeon. Never seen Never a baby seen pigeon. A baby pigeon. You've seen plenty of other bloody pigeons. They're all... I there must They're be all the over stupidest the shop. bird I've ever known to man. I... So... We've we've talked about pigeons before. Mm. I know we're not the biggest fans of pigeons. Mm -mm. And I've never really had any respect for pigeons until... I listened to a brilliant podcast. I love this podcast. Okay. So I'm actually going to... I'm going to endorse this podcast. Mm. Um, it's called The Rest is History. Okay. And it's with uh, Dominic Sandbrook, and I think it's Tom Holland, I think. Um, Tom Holland is the person that plays Spider-Man. Oh, hang about. <laughs> the Rest is History podcast. Honestly, it is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Um, oh, it is Oh, um, I must be the guy with this. Oh, I know who Tom Holland is. Actually, that, that's not that's not. Yeah, it is. It's Tom Tom Holland and Dominic Sandbrook. They yeah. are brilliant. They are brilliant, and they did an episode, um, on pigeon all about pigeons. Okay, and I and it was so ridiculous. And and you know you know me, I don't like pigeons. I was thinking, what the what the fringe? What the fringe? Exactly. Well, we said that at exactly the same time. So I listened to it, mm. and they were talking about. The part that so Reuters news agency mm. started off as as a, an organisation that that used pigeons to send news. Oh, yeah, carrier pigeons of to course. distribute yeah. news and yeah, yeah. And you just think what? And then the role that pigeons played in the military mm. over thousands so, of years. Yeah, pigeons are actually very very intelligent. Not, obviously, not They're your amazing. not your low level pigeons. street ones that you see walking around going. Mm. <laughs> just gonna do here there's a bloke coming towards me right not those types of pigeons yeah but racing well, the pigeons racing don't move out delivery the pigeons are very very good yeah <laughs> not not the pigeons that when you're driving up to them and they're in the middle of the road and you think you need to move yeah you need to move you're about to get run over you need to move and now i'm gonna have to slam on my brakes you idiot <laughs> idiot pigeon what are you doing the only thing that's worse than that is the bloody pheasants yeah, pheasants. Are, pheasants are just. I don't get it. Like they just don't move. They, so, hey ho. Um, but I I put in there what other animals are elusive, and you've put Sasquatch, <laughs> Scotch, Loch Ness monster. I mean, Sasquatch. we could do a whole another conspiracy theory of ones on whether we believe that they yes. exist. So there yes. is there is cause for that that could go on the distinct and jovial podcast. The, the chupacabra. The chupacabra. The chupacabra. I thought you when you started going. I thought you were going to say Chewbacca. <laughs> Literally. Mm. I can't do it. Yeah, that's much better. 
That's an absolute... Dom, you have to do that again. Oh, I can't do I can only do it once. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're cold? Really? You're in a fur coat. <laughs> Best quote from the from the seventh Star Wars film. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> there we go. Yorkshire. Uh, what else have I done? <laughs> oh my god, you've done <laughs> Chewbacca. That's perfect, Chewbacca. <laughs> I don't know what it. Was. I'm actually, I'm actually in awe. <laughs> Tom. I'm sitting, I'm laughing, but I'm, I am honestly, I, I, I bow mean, down. It's not to one your... of the hardest ones to do. No, it what is, would be more impressive is if I could whistle like R two D two. That would be even more impressive, wouldn't it? I yeah, can't, that would be but cool. that would be pretty cool. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, yes. Um, so yeah where would we go Um, animals that are elusive that's where it started wasn't it yes you put at baby owls definitely are although (laughs) i don't know i mean i have seen baby owls i've never seen a baby pigeon you've seen a baby yeah i've seen a baby bat i've held a baby bat oh my god wrapped up like a burrito what What was it accidentally in a burrito? No, it was at a zoo. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. It was wrapped up like a burrito, like you'd kind of do that. Oh my god! I fed him bananas. What on pizza? <laughs> no, <laughs> on the pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a fruit so bat. It's not interested. <laughs> it was a fruit. Wouldn't have been oh, interested okay. in the in the dough. <laughs> I wonder if fruit bats, if they did a podcast, would they be going? Honestly, idiots that put cheese on <laughs> yeah, pizza. Idiots that put cheese with fruit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got to just have fruit. Who the hell puts tomato sauce and cheese and pepperoni? Bonkers. They should all be shot. They should all be shot. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) But yes, I have seen a baby bat and a baby owl. Okay. Okay. The joys of uh, zoos. Not so elusive, though. And um, and, uh, bird sanctuaries. Definitely. Definitely would recommend going to them. Um, Okay. Uh, but owls are also a ridiculous creature, but we, that's a whole different separate conversation. So. I love owls. Owls are brilliant, but they are ridiculous creatures. <laughs> they're ridiculously good. Um, point in question number five. Apologies, Zephyr. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> I went to breathe and it didn't work. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, it did. This, this one is going to baffle. Does Lightning McQueen have car insurance or life insurance? And for those who don't know who Lightning McQueen is, he is the uh, protagonist from the Pixar <laughs> movie Cars. <laughs> so this made me laugh out loud when I read it. Because I think it's a genius it's question. It's a genius question. It's genius. <laughs> Do you have an answer? It would have to be life. You reckon it's life insurance? Oh, it'd, it'd have to be life insurance, wouldn't it? I suppose the question would be, right, if if Lightning McQueen had a crash, would he be responsible for the third party? <laughs> I've stumped you completely, isn't it? Because the whole point why you have the yes. whole point where you have car insurance is not for you, it's you know, because at minimum yes, for the vehicle, it's for the but third, he's... Well, no, no, it's for the third party vehicle, not for your vehicle. You can get third party only. Yeah, as a minimum. Mm. Yeah, as a minimum. Right. But, but Lightning McQueen, he would he have insurance to protect if he ran into something? Or, you know, you know, if I walk into you and knock you over and, and you break your arm, for example, right, you might, <laughs> right, like, you know, and it's an accident. Like, I don't know, you know, we're, we're both on, I don't know, we're both skiing, right? And we accidentally collide, right? I don't have insurance, that support that fixes you you are responsible you're still responsible to go to the hospital and get yourself fixed and if we're in a european country have to pay now because yay brexit um that was sarcasm by the way folks um so would if lightning mcqueen had the same so if they were in a car race which they are and he crashes into somebody is he responsible for the repairs of the other person or because they are a life or am I too? De- am I deep no, in this I... too much? <laughs> no, I th- I think you're right. No, I think you're right. I think legally, he's not liable. Yeah. So that's why I think you're right with the life insurance. 
because yeah. you'd have life it insurance just to cover yourself. I have yes. life insurance. Parents yes. have life insurance. Yeah. So in the event that he dies, yeah. that's that. So which, which then makes my question a completely moot point. <laughs> does, which is, unfortunately. Because he got full no but claims it, it, it bonus. That made, made me roar with laughter when I read your one. Has McQueen got full no claims bonus? Based on the films, No. <laughs> Yeah, probably. You would have lost it very, would have lost very it early very, on. Very soon. Um, and I, I put about what other considerations are there for cars and cars, but then we start deeping uh, like Pixar movies, <laughs> and it's a whole dangerous yeah. game. We've done the Pixar universe, and sometimes you go, we have. It's not yeah, real, folks. Have. It's a movie. We just have to let it be. <laughs> let it be. No, was it? Let it's it not let it, it's let it go, is it? Of course let it, it is. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> God, I don't know. Sorry, just had a moment. <laughs> <clears throat> oh dear. <laughs> number six. Yeah, number six. <clears throat> I am struggling here today, folks. So apologies, but this is brilliant. It's been brilliant. I'm loving life. Absolutely loving life. Um, personalized or customized? Custom? Customized? Customized? <laughs> Caramelized. Caramelized. Caram- caramelized lo- number, number plates. plates. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my life. I did something wrong in a previous life. I'm pretty convinced <laughs> by this. Um, I'm, do you know what, do you know what's going to be brilliant about that that I've just said? Right, with customized. Right, I'm very curious what. So, for those that watch on YouTube, you can you can put on the closed captioning. So you can see, and I go and edit, oh, yes. I go and edit that. So it makes sense. Cause if it didn't edit, it doesn't make sense half the time. Right. Just make it. So I get rid of like the ums and, and the repeated words. I'm very good at kind of going, uh, for example, and I will repeat <laughs> myself. So I take them out. So it's easier to read. It is my mum's biggest form of entertainment when she's watching the podcast. She doesn't watch us. She just watches the closed captioning because she knows how ridiculous it is. Excellent. So I'm very curious what customised is going to come out as. Maybe maybe it'll turn it to customised. I was going to say, maybe it'll turn it to customised, but it also sounded a bit like custard at <laughs> one point. Cus- Custardised. Custardised. Caramelised. <laughs> what next? I'm getting hungry now. I don't Sticky know. I'm hungry. And custard. I have a go that, man. <laughs> anyway, on to the actual <laughs> point in question. Yes. Do you believe in having a personalised registration plate? No. <laughs> there you yeah, go. My mum's going to be devastated because my mum's got a personalised registration plate. <laughs> That's my dad. I, if, I, if I was to have a personalised number plate, it would have to be something really stupid, like the example uh, yeah, I've given Yeah, you have there, given... Which is just kind of <laughs> using... To be fair, when you, when the you... first one that you've given is almost a legal number plate. If you changed... Ooh. Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's because it's t- it's two two letters, two numbers, uh, three letters. Uh, uh, so m- one of my old number plates, Charlie Echo Six Zero Echo Hotel Oscar, right? That's uh, it's my very old number plate. It's not the current car I have. Um, you know, two letters, two numbers, and the obviously the numbers denote okay. the year of the car. So six six zero is the second half of twenty ten. So you've currently got, you'd have to change this, right? So this is what you'd have to change it to. It would have to be Bravo Oscar 08. Uh, Probably would have to be India Echo Sierra instead of one Echo Sierra. (laughs) So for anyone that's good enough with... (laughs) Numbers. <laughs> Gary has been very childish with his choice of personalised registration plate. But that would be a legal registration. I probably wouldn't actually. They'd probably ban that one, but that would be a legal registration plate. Really? Yeah, that would denote an 08 car. Car built in the. I would sell my house. I am going to have plate. a look on the DVLA to see if that what exists. <laughs> I am. Because the other one is a ridiculous one. Yeah, the others one, are not, I... not the same. Well, you say that, so I put Doctor One because there is a story behind that. Oh, interesting. That. I want to hear the story behind that. Yeah. So so in many years ago, um, I saw a Ferrari in Gerrard's Cross. It was a Ferrari. I'm pretty sure it was a Ferrari 355, and it had the license plate Doctor One. Okay. 
DR1. And I thought, what? That's incredible. Wow. Do you know what the most expensive well, yeah. number plate is in the world? No. I think it's from China. Uh, yeah. I think it's that. Oh, no, maybe not. Who owns? Um, and they... Is it the number four? I think. Because the number four... What? That's it? Yeah, Just one number? I think, like... No. It's either that or it's... Oh, no, not number four. must be eight. Yes. So, it's the number eight. Because the, the lucky number eight is their, their most... Is there must one? So there is a there is a Chinese billionaire that has just the number plate eight, um, because eight is considered the other one. But the number four is very unlucky in China. So much so that whereas you know, so for example, in my building, I am in, um, I'm in the fourteenth flat. Uh, no, sorry, I'm in the thirteenth flat. But my right. flat number oh, is fourteen. Okay. There isn't a number thirteen. But you see, I thought thirteen was lucky for it, some. Not oh, yeah, it, it, not in the UK. In China, their floors go okay. obviously ground first, second, third, fifth. They skip out. I they skip out labelling the fourth floor because fourth four is is considered unlucky. I'll be damned. So like they're also the same so just, apartments. I'll be damned. Well, I actually did mm. not know that. That's a bit Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, it's like to know that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm also having a look at it. So, you can get the license plates worth twenty four point three million dollars. Yeah. to have the license plate M M M M from California. California F one in England. That's twenty yes. million. That's yeah, insane. That's some insane USA <laughs> in New York. Twenty million. USA. Uh, so I don't have a personalised registration plate. I change my car way too often um, to be bothered with the faff of that. My um, coach, my coach has one of the best number plates, um, and uh, I'm going to have to t- say his number plate, unfortunately. But it, it, you know, um, so he has G13 TKD. Now, obviously, if you put the one and a three together, what does that make? It makes a B, B. So he has GB TKD, Great Britain Taekwondo, TKD being the uh, shortened. Oh yeah, I don't know how God. he got that number plate, but oh that's a genius God. number plate. Um, that is yeah. genius. Uh, and my dad, my, both of my parents have personalised number plates. Um, my my dad's ends in his initials, um, and my mum has a number plate that ends in LUV. <laughs> Oh, that's and she drives, and it's she drives a bright yellow car. That's so. <laughs> yeah, that's bright. And listen, don't, you're going to get into trouble I am gonna again. Get, do you know what? It's interesting. I was at, I was at yeah, home right. this weekend. Just uh, no uh, earlier this week, um, and we did have a discussion about my mum's driving because she comes in and goes, "I just beat someone away from the lights," and I went, "You complained <laughs> when I mentioned that on the podcast." Yeah, but I still did it. <laughs> <laughs> you're still going to be in trouble. I know I'm going to be in trouble. It's fine. It's fine. So no to personalised registration plates for us. Yeah. No. Yeah, for yeah, not for me. Uh, point at question number <clears> seven: <throat> uh, having a snake as a pet. <laughs> I know somebody that's got a snake as okay. a pet. I just don't see the point. Sorry. <laughs> so let me explain the logic. So, got two dogs in this household. And one of them was, so I was asleep on the couch before the podcast, just catching up on some Z's. And the Chihuahua was on my chest asleep whilst I was Mm. sleeping. And that was Mm. pretty cool. And then my golden retriever, Larry, he's next to me and I'm giving him Mm. fuss. And I just think, oh, okay, that's really cute. I love it. He's a big, he's just a big furry (laughs) Um, (laughs) What do you do with a snake? Uh, what what is the mm. point? You can't play fetch, you can't play with, fetch the snake. with the snake unless the snake is what you're using for fetch. Oh. Eat the snake, <laughs> right? 
exactly. What so what is the point? What do you what are you wanting to achieve? What do you want from yeah. a pet? That you think, oh, I'll get a snake. That's a really yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah no, I I, 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 just I completely don't get agree. It. And it's very expensive. Like, you know, okay, I'm sure the dogs yeah. are reasonably expensive, what with vet bills and um Larry and his sensitive stomach. Um <laughs> Yes, bless him. He's he's yeah. He loves rich tea. <laughs> He loves his rich tea biscuits. But it's also what you have to feed snakes. You have to feed them like dead frozen yeah, mice, mice and, and things like that, which I'd imagine is more expensive than your traditional dog food. And like you've then got to think the heating bill for a snake if it's a if it's a thing yes. like that. Yeah. Because you can't get them jackets or anything, can you? <laughs> no. I can't I've just can't. got an image of a snake in a knitted sweater now. <laughs> yeah. Or, well you know, it'd be a just, knitted sock, wouldn't just it? Just a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like a yeah, exactly, or a fingerless glove. <laughs> the other four fingers are just, just like wagging it around, like around. <laughs> be like the 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 inflatable tube man doing this. <laughs> oh dear, I'm gonna get I'm gonna gift that up and send it to everybody next week. <laughs> <laughs> send that to Karen. <laughs> Love that. Um, no, so I agree. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not. Why would I want an animal that could kill me in my house? Like, yeah, yeah. And I, I exactly. So, and then I, I've put in like the what boundaries did you have as other pets? And you've put about keeping a great white, a great white in a swimming pool. I'm not sure that. <laughs> I mean, actually, there, so I read a book. I read a biography, mm. and. Um, and it was about this guy who's he was a he was a uh, very very rich poker player, um, mm. and he actually ended up getting. I think there were sharks. He got a couple of sharks, and he he just chucked them and he bought them and he just put them in a swimming pool. And it's like you can't just chuck sharks into a chlorinated wow. pool, um, and they ended up dying. But you know he he tried it. He was like, okay, fine, I'll just get some sharks because he was just crazy. Um, oh, some people have too much money. I know, but th so this is true. The second part of of what my comment in there, which is true, is Prince used to keep doves in his house because he was obsessed hmm. with doves. He loved doves, and and one of his most famous songs is "When Doves Cry." Mm, mm. And uh, the whole thing, I th uh, there was a whole dove theme going on at the time when he released um, uh. Purple Rain and and that that iconic album, mm. um, and Great yeah, album. he yes, amazing album. One he of, kept one of beautiful album. It is amazing. He was he was so talented, mm. um, and yeah, he used to keep doves in his house. Man. I think I think like birds as a as pets is acceptable. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I, like I I can you know it, it's entertainment and some of them can be fairly affectionate and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get that. By the way, that's not for me. That's not pushing the boundaries. I I just no. put it in there because I thought, yeah. oh, it's, a, it's 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 just an interesting fact. I I I remembered. But yeah, yeah, anything. I think anything like really like I was about to say reptiles, but actually I can understand certain reptiles like snakes. I can't because I can't see snakes being affectionate. But I have met and seen affectionate things like bearded dragons and other other things like that. Um, okay, mm, I have. Okay very weird it's very weird to uh to have a bearded dragon almost beg like a dog for scratches behind the the ears so to speak but they do they enjoy it apparently wow okay things things you things you learn on this podcast things you learn on this podcast. every day is a school day <laughs> every day is a school day um and yeah, so I think those are like slightly more acceptable. Snakes, I think, are a step too far. The other one that I could oh. never understand. So my uncle used to have two pets. So he used to have ferrets, which I can understand, okay. although they are mentalists. They are. Absolute mentalists, and they stink. Um, but the other one I, co I couldn't understand is tarantulas. Oh, oh dumb. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, thank you. Moving swiftly on. Not at oh. Did you hold one? Did you? I've never held a tarantula. No, I never held with tarantulas. 
I was offered, but it just was a bit like, I'm not particularly like arachnophobic Ugh. and I would if I needed to, but I was like, I don't need to. And I am generally Ugh. pretty, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of horses and cows. I'm pretty terrified of horses, to be honest, because most animals can smell fear. And I'm like, I clearly smell of it because most will, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure any, any animal will attack me for absolutely no reason. So yeah, I don't trust them. I smell of fear. Um, this is brilliant aftershave. So if you remember from the fragrance special, and it's called Fear by Calvin Klein. Um, no, it's just it's it's not true. Um, <laughs> try I was expecting you to say, I smell a fear, and 60% of the time it works every time. <laughs> ah, yeah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. <laughs> and then we're back onto the Sasquatch, because I'm pretty sure in that film, someone shouts out, it smells like Bigfoot's dick. I think you're right. <laughs> you were wondering where I went from there, weren't you? Is that where the squatch comes in? Is that what it is? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Squatch is the smell from a bigfoot. <laughs> I love that scene because Will Ferrell goes, mm, that's, that's quite pungent. It's quite pungent. It stings the nostrils. It stings the nostrils, yeah. <laughs> it smells like bigfoot's dick. <laughs> It's also just bef- after the scene after it is when Brick goes loud oh. noises, uh, yeah, <laughs> which is great. Steve Corral is I a love genius. it. He is, he's fantastic. Right, our last um, poignant <laughs> question, nice and simple, Rubik's cube. Yay or nay? I yay because. I love the concept. I think it's genius. I loved it. Mm. Nay, because I could never do it because I'm too stupid. (laughs) I am going to set myself a 2023 target to learn how to do a Rubik's Cube. Cool. Okay. I've decided that if I'm going to set anything, that's going to be that. So I can do it following instructions. If I do it step by step, yeah. If I do it step by step, I I can do it. But if something goes wrong halfway through, so if I make a wrong turn and go, oh, crap, yeah. I wasn't supposed to have done that, mm. I can't then, I'm not, <laughs> I haven't got the brain capacity to undo the mistake mm. to to then finish it. So Okay. Yeah. It, but there's always yeah. a pattern, like regardless of what it is, there must yes. be a, there's a yeah, rule, there is. there's yeah, rules there's, to it. There, it it's, yeah. It's, so if you've got all the rules, then it's just a case of like figuring out which rule that you need to apply at a certain point. Yeah, and you have to memorize those. And if you memorize, mm. and that's the, that's the key, you have to memorize. You have to keep doing repetition, and then it doesn't matter. And then you and then you'll end up like one of these people that can just do, you know, they can do the Rubik's cube in under sixty seconds or something crazy. Mm. You can mix it up as much as you want, give it to them, and they just go. And yeah, yeah. Done. I, 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 I'm, I'm not bothered about being someone that doesn't time. You know, if it takes me, no, half I just want to be able to do it. But I just want to yeah. be able to do it. I want to yeah. be able to go. Yes, I can do a Rubik's cube. That would be. Yeah, that'd be pretty that, cool. That would be my thing. In fact, okay. I might even make a YouTube video out of it. That would be interesting. Yeah, I, I'm going to make one where you just basically very carefully just peel the stickers off, <laughs> and then stick and them, back, stick on. them back on. Yeah. That's exactly what my mother would say. <laughs> Just be a lot of stickers and stick it back on the right order. Or it came in the box in the right place. Why would you move it? Yeah, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Just put it in the display ca- cabinet and be done with it. Oh, dear. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. I don't really know where we go from here with those with those, with those. those. I have no stuff. idea. Oh, but I like your challenge. I, I love the challenge you've set yourself, though. You're going to have to mm. keep me, keep us posted. I think, you know, because we, we've discussed before about, like, uh, what should we call it? Um, yeah, like, um, hobbies. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions, yeah. Right. And they're always like, oh, I want to lose weight. Oh, I want to get fitter. And yes, I do want to do that, but I'm already starting that rather than waiting until the new year. Um, I could start the Rubik's Cube at any point, but it, it might be like a nice thing to sort of say, actually, if I'm going to set myself a challenge for this year, just to do something that's completely inane, but just to prove that I could learn something, it's the Rubik's Cube. I think you should get a Rubik's Cube and then at one minute past midnight, <laughs> crack it open and just start. Yeah. Yeah. I'm start not sure. the timer. 
I, I've got plans actually this year for New Year's. I'm not sure they'd appreciate if I just <laughs> yeah start a no. timer. How how soon into the year can I solve this bloody <laughs> exactly? Yeah, exactly. So we're into July. Well done, Dom. You might have got halfway through now. <laughs> and can I just say, right? It's about priorities. Forget all the New Year's celebrations and spending time with friends, family, and loved ones. You've got Rubik's cube to do. It's priorities, man. I am going to be very interested to see what Laura says with that because she's going to be the people <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, just tell her. Just tell her. I'm sorry. Sorry. Doing a Rubik's That's cube. it now. Celebrations are over. Rubik's cube. Fun time is over. Oh, dear. Now we're getting serious. Now we're getting too serious. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 2023. Woohoo! Yep. Rubik's cubes. Yay. What have I done with myself? Idioms. See, yes. Let's go on to the idioms. How dare you? How I'm day. not an idiot. I'm not an idiom. <laughs> right. Are you yeah, feeling okay? I, I don't know. You're I've been t- dying think... to get the background to this one, by the way, this first one. Teaching people to suck eggs. I did some yeah. research on this one. I put the link in. Oh, that's brilliant. Right. So first idiom. Um, <laughs> what was it? Teaching people to suck eggs. Right. You can't teach people to suck eggs. It, basically to... Have you heard of it before? Do you know oh, what yeah. it means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Giving advice to somebody which they're already familiar with. It'd be like telling me, the, te- me trying to teach the Rubik's Cube inventor how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Exactly. You can't teach people to suck eggs. Where it comes from, <laughs> this, is, this is genius. So, it from because the original phrasing is teaching your grandmother to suck eggs. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, of course. So, um, and it comes from dentistry. <clears throat> Because okay. elderly people, before you know, before dentures were exist were were created, um, obviously generally had really bad teeth, right, or no teeth. So the simplest way was for them to get protein was to poke a pinhole in the shell of a raw egg and suck out the contents. So therefore, a grandmother was usually practice experts on sucking eggs and didn't need anyone to show her. Can I just say, why the hell wouldn't they just eat Jaffa cakes? Because they contain 5% protein. (laughs) And they're soft. There you have it, folks. Not only can we come up with distinct stuff, we can also refer back to it. This is... We oh. loop back. We interconnect content. Call us. We're going to have to play the Inception sound over this, aren't I? I'm going to have to find an edit of the Inception sound. Oh, dear. But there you go. There is the origins of the you teaching your grandmother to say okay. <laughs> uh, You're pretty horrible. Raw eggs, by the way, are horrible. Like... I've never had just raw egg on its own. I've had I've it tried on it once. things. Really? Yeah. So because like a lot of like bodybuilders and, and people like that, and back <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, they will, they need to get X amount of calories in. And when you have to try and eat 3000 calories, but of pure protein, it's really difficult. So you can like just do it. And um, I had a housemate. Uh, oh. Interestingly, I had a housemate. His name was Dominic. Um, at university and he used to that's what he used to do so he used to get oh. this is the this is the best bit orange juice and raw eggs and stir it and then drink it oh my god because he wanted he needed the calories um and and i don't know if he still does it but yeah that's that is hideous <laughs> that is hideous oh that's, that's actually grim feels, actually that is grim i feel sick thinking about that that's that's bad Shall we move on to the next idiom then? Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Right, pig's ear. Okay. Uh, and you'll love this one because I know that you're a fan of Cockney rhyming and slang. Oh, I am. So, uh, do you know what a pig's ear is? Well, as in, what, what does that For idiom Cockney mean? Slang. Or, or just over oh, Cockney slang? No, I, no, because I didn't know that was Cockney slang. Beer. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Pig's ear. I'm going yeah. for I'm going to get a tiddly wink of a pig's ear. Why did I not know that? I know pretty much every Cockney rhyming slang. Yeah. But I didn't know that. 
<laughs> it, that's easy enough to decipher as I'm going to get a drink of beer, although you would need a cockney for an explanation of why tiddly wink of a pig's ear was thought to be an improvement of drink of beer. <laughs> tiddly, tiddly wink of a tiddly wink drink. Tiddly wink yeah. drink of a, of a beer. Tiddly wink of a pig's ear. And then what? Basically, in like the 19, 19, uh, sorry, 1850s, when you started to do more around like uh like pigs might fly pigs started to be used for like you know like extreme things okay like uh basically a pig's ear started to become then a uh, kind of colloquialism rather than uh cockney around his slam this is in the usa um and it was 1950s in the reader's digest if you make a pig's ear of the first one you can try the other one um so uh God. yeah I don't Adam and Eve it. Yeah. Can't, I can't Adam and Eve it. Yeah. So you've now got a new Cockney Rhyme with Slam to use at work. Tiddly wink. Should we a go for a pig's ear? ear? Yeah, let's do it. Or a couple of Britneys. <laughs> I don't know what Britney's one. Britney Spears. Beers. Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible as well. I, I, it's that bad. That one is I bad. prefer the old traditional stuff like... I, and, and I do get it. If you actually throw it into sentences mm. naturally and quite quickly, it can be very difficult for somebody who doesn't understand Cockney rhyming slang to know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just give him a bell on the dog. Uh, on the phone? Dog and bone, yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, use your loaf. Loaf of bread, head. Okay, so you... Ah, right, so that's how yeah, Cockney rhyming right, slang so, is. Yeah, ah, yeah, okay. so... Yeah, Look at the size of those plates. Plates of meat, feet. Ah, okay. Didn't know that one. Love your whistle. Whistle and flute, suit. <laughs> yeah. It's gone up the old uh, Jack and Jill. So, the, the pub's up the, up the old Jack. Jack and Jill Hill. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Well, there you go. You learn, again, education for myself and everybody else <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> oh, they're all probably going, really, Jerry? This is really... <laughs> I had a misspent youth. <laughs> Instead of learning stuff I was supposed to learn for my bloody GCSEs and A-levels, and, 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 and focusing, instead of me focusing on important stuff that would set me up for my future, I thought, shall I learn this chemistry? But let's be or honest. Or shall I learn Cockney rhyming slang? Let's be honest. On this podcast, have you used trigonometry or <laughs> understanding the period Every of time? Table, period of Every table, time. Or have you used Cockney writing slang on this podcast? Which is more successful? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Sorry, chemistry and biology and <laughs> physics teachers. I have can, it. I can, <laughs> I, can, I can hear some of my teachers going, Dominic, <laughs> a day. Dominic. Yeah. No, they're saying, white, see me after class. Yeah, that, right. that, that is He's true. No longer... <laughs> I've had that. <laughs> <He's> no longer... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah. The joys of being the class clown. Oh, it's all flooding back now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I was, I was an okay student. I got yeah, reasonably yeah, good grades. Yeah. The, only reason, the only reason I got away with most of my clowning around and antics is because I still got good grades and I did work hard. But yes, I yeah, was. But did I you... was okay, absolutely so... class clown. <laughs> so you didn't get the, old oh, could do better if you didn't. If he wasn't always uh, trying to make people laugh and no, I would normally oh, okay. get I would normally get works really hard could do with less chatting. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, I didn't get that. <laughs> I got a less chatting bit, but I didn't get that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, oh, move on. <laughs> uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, this one's a little bit more simpler. This is just a. This it is, is. This uh, well, is just German phrase. It's originally a German phrase. Oh, is it? I didn't know. Okay, so what I got was uh, in the early 1500s, people only bathed about once a year. Yeah. Uh, and they bathed in the same water without changing it. Nice. So the adult males would bathe first, then the females, leaving the children and babies to go last. By the time the babies got in, the water was clouded with filth. The yeah. poor mothers had to take extra care that their babies were not thrown out with the bathwater. Yeah. Yeah. But it's originally German as well. Um, and I'm not going to try and pronounce the German because Samwise will read this and she'll be like, or listen to this and she'll be like, what oh, are you I doing? Want to, I, want to, I want to see if I can pronounce it. Yeah. I'm going to Google it now. Don't throw the... Don't. don't. <laughs> I like the way we're both... <laughs> On the... I didn't know about German origins yeah. of that. 
Uh, yeah, so, yes. It's on the wiki page. The idiom derives from a German proverb. Right, I'm just going to it now. The wiki page has it on. I'm on the wiki page, I can't see it. Uh, under history. Ah, das Kind mit dem Bade ausschütten. Ausschütten, yeah. <laughs> das Kind mit dem Bade ausschütten. Das Kind mit dem Bade ausschütten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, Samwise, you're going to have to translate that for me. Um, or your other half, one of the two. Um, al- <laughs> I did like the alternate expressions that are at the bottom of this page, though. Those are pretty good. Throw the- oh, here we go. Yeah, throw the champagne out with the cork. Throw the, sh- oh, I like the that. champagne with the cook, yeah. That met them. Empty what the-, the hell? Don't scour the, the Teflon, Teflon when, when you wash, wash your pad. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that's, that was the one that got me. That was the one that There's got There's no me. connection. There's literally no connection. You, you, it's, that's apples and, and it's not even apples and oranges. You're comparing apples with a tractor. What? Don't scour the Teflon when you wash your pan. What are they on about? I knew that would get what you. What a load of nonsense. What? Okay, I'm going to have to close that tab. <laughs> well, I've closed the tab. <laughs> <laughs> um, last idiom that we've got for today is giving the cold shoulder. Yes. Which I is... didn't know about any of these, by the way. So you didn't know? Um, have you never heard these idioms before? Or... No, I have, but yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't know the, uh, I didn't know about the meanings in it. So this is, this is interesting. This is in medieval England, it was customary to give a guest a cold piece of meat from the shoulder of mutton, yes. pork or beef yeah. chop yeah. when the host felt it was time for the guest to leave. <laughs> this was a polite way to communicate. Basically, I, I can hashtag get, get out. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, hashtag leave. <laughs> hashtag sling your own. We do, with the, way that, oh, the way that we do it in, in British society is we slap our legs and go, right. <laughs> That's, how we yes. do it. That's how we do it in modern times. <laughs> That's how we indicate we want somebody to leave. Slap our legs and go, right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You, yeah. You, and it's, yeah, you just do it at the tops of your legs. Yeah, yeah. You just sort of go. And usually right. you stand up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. And normally, if the other person is stereotypically British, they'll go, oh, is that the time already? <laughs> or or you get, some, which has happened to me on a couple of occasions, where you just, people don't get the hint and you're thinking, right, I, I've I've tried every subtle means to say this <laughs> this evening's over mm. you need to leave mm. you need to leave my property uh, what do i do next do i just call <laughs> call 999 <laughs> yeah. someone's being so anti british <laughs> help <laughs> you just go right and grab your mobile and go uh, hello yes could i have the police please <laughs> interestingly i've now got trespassers on my property interestingly like we in britain can be very bad for like the like what's it called um like the non-direct way we we do subtle like yeah. and, and drop hints which i can't stand because i'm really bad at them but so um the weekend just gone i was at um one of one of my best friend's weddings um and she's getting married to a german um, but she also has a german citizenship samwise and um on the friday we went and we went and well, got together as groomsmen and we did archery um story here i am terrible i am <laughs> toilet when it comes to archery i was useless but it was great fun it was really good fun and that actually it was quite a surprise to be completely useless at something but have a lot of fun doing it um because i'm not, not normal- too toilet i hope like you didn't turn any of the instructors or anything into a kebab no was no kebab. i was i was safe okay. i was safe um i did miss the target quite a few times but that's a, that's a bit worrying. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, I was the okay. only one that managed to get it three foot above. Like, it was a full wall and the target was there. And I was the only one to get it. What was the target? Get the it sky. Three foot into the wall above the target. And it was only, okay. and I was also the only person that could reach it, being the only person over six foot. <laughs> so, anyway. But what was interesting is when we got back to um, where we were staying, um, or at the hotel where <clears throat> all the, 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 our German colleagues, German colleagues, German friends, um, German relatives <laughs> um, were were staying. There was there was three three of us English people that were kind of like we all stood around like, what do we want to do? Do we want to like? Do we need to go and organize dinner? What do we need to do? 
something, right? There was loads of organization that we were trying to figure out and we're trying to be subtle about it. Anyway, eventually one of the, one of the um, um, actually um, the groom's uh, dad just turned around and went, Mr. Beta, thank you for a great time. I'm done. See you later. Like it was uh, just like a completely open and honest uh, Bischbeter in German being. See you later. Um, and he was just like, it, and all the rest of them went, yep, thank you very much. That was brilliant, but we're done. We're going to go get some food and go to bed. See you later. And we were like, this is brilliant. I love it. Yeah, it was just so direct and open. And, and, and like, I was like, why can't we be like that in like the UK? Why can't we just be like, we're, too, we're overly polite. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like the whole, when you say, um, in fact, I had a French colleague that said they didn't understand the the true meaning of like in 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 um, English culture when you say, "Oh, okay, that's that's interesting." Mm. So they took it literally yeah. and went, "Oh, they they liked the presentation. Yeah. They thought it was interesting." Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're, we're, like, not interesting we're, in a good we're way. We're terrible because we'll use phrases like, mm, "That's not ideal," and that could mean that our fathers died. Yeah, that's not ideal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's the type yeah, of thing. You know, there's this, there's this British, um, like almost prude, proud, like subtleness about it, or don't want to make a fuss type thing and and some of it's lovely i love I, it's really endearing i love the Br- the british sense of humor is probably one of the best and and um uh I and, agree and samwise's I husband agree. is is he's funny in german and english because he gets the british humor which is is yeah, brilliant and brilliant. it's just genius but yeah the, the, obviously there are disadvantages to that and <laughs> I, I might have spoken about it before on the podcast the difference between eastern european and western european cultures where like as you become more Americanized, it's you know generally your um, your trust is built upon kind of you know what your nicety and even if that's fake. Um, so whereas Eastern European oh, cultures yeah, are okay. you know their trust was built upon honesty and openness. So you know if you do something dumb in Eastern European countries, they'll generally go that was dumb. And whereas in the UK, <laughs> you might you might go hmm. Is there an alternative solution? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's a difference between it. There's a difference. Yeah. We, we're built to not offend, whereas they're built to just be open and honest. It's a shame we didn't do this podcast before that wedding, because then you could have gone, das Kind mit dem Bader ausschütten, and then just walk out. And they'd all look at me and like I'm crazy. Go, Why did he just say, yeah, I'm throwing the baby out with the parcel? So. Yeah. And walk out. What is interesting? <laughs> what is really interesting is they kept apologizing, going, "We're sorry, our English is not perfect." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I can't speak a word of flipping German, so don't apologize." <laughs> yeah, but I love it when when so every German I've ever come across that speaks English in an almost a perfect English accent and is grammatically perfect goes, "I'm really sorry about my standard of English," yeah. and you go. Uh, it's better than you mine. You're speaking, you do realise you're speaking English better than about three quarters of the population of England. Yes, <laughs> and then apologising for it. What? what is wrong? Yeah, um, but you could do like different things. So this could be it. We could maybe dedicate a whole podcast to just what to say <laughs> when you would need to leave a wedding reception in Germany. So you yeah. could say, uh, I don't know, like "Ich habe Scheiße in meinem Unterhose," and then just walk out. <laughs> Oh, Samwise, when you get to this but, bit, tell me. Tell me when you get to this bit. Mein Hundrex hat keine Nase. <laughs> Sorry. That's not really rubbish. It's a, it's a, what was that? The Monty Python. It was the funniest joke in the world. Mein Hundrex, I've probably got this completely wrong, but Mein Hundrex hat keine Nase. Yeah, it's everything. Wie reicht <laughs> Absolute scheißlich. <laughs> there you go. Guten Tag. <laughs> And then off you go. I'm trying to think what how how the wedding I mean in Germany it was it wasn't there wasn't a party. Like we knew that the the, the English wedding had or the British wedding had finished when we sw- when we sung Sweet Caroline. <laughs> so, Sweet Caroline. She, so as soon as you say it, the song just immediately pops into ba, the head, ba, doesn't it? Ba. Ba. <laughs> yeah, and the band that that the, that they had was brilliant. It was brilliant. Shall I do some interesting facts? Go for it. Go for it. But can I just ask one thing? Did the band play Rock Me Amadeus? 
don't think so off the top of my head. That's a shame. Okay. We definitely had Mr. Brightside by the Killers though, and that was good. Oh, that's that's a track. That's that a tune. tune. Right. Interesting facts for November. I have ten of these. Um some can be quite short descriptions, some can be quite long. Um, but I just want to get your reaction to them. So this is just a new segment that we introduced a couple of podcasts ago. <laughs> yep. So uh why I'm going to start this first one with a question. Why are school buses yellow in America? I know this one. It's to do with visibility in low light conditions. To do with visibility full stop. Uh, yeah, apparently like um, humans are more likely to notice moving yellow objects. Something like uh, it's like uh, 74 like times. Flying banana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're more likely to see a flying banana than a flying pig because it's yellow and you would notice. But the specific hue that they pick for um, school buses is that. So much so that if you look at fire engines these days, they will have the yellow, they will have yellow stripes on them because it's the yellow is more noticeable oh, yeah, than the red. Of course, yes, you're right. You're right. So, yeah, there is, a, there is an you're interesting right. fact that it is yellow because we see it the fastest and it's why there are yellow stripes on fire trucks which by the way it doesn't matter how old you are fire trucks are cool <laughs> they are everyone loves a fire okay. truck yeah um second one the white bell bird has been named as the loudest bird in existence you can hear its call a mile away and it's 125 decibels Jesus. To put that into perspective, that is the same as being stood next to a speaker at a rock concert or the sound of a chainsaw while you are holding it. Bloody yeah, hell. It's very loud. Um, wow. What's it called the again? The White Bell Bird. The White Bell Bird. Uh, bell Bird being one. Never even heard yeah. of it. It's, it's a bit of a funky looking creature. Um, native to the Amazon rainforest. Um, but it's actually to woo. Oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a funny little... Why is the white bellbird so loud? Native to as a loud... It uses call not for long-distance communication or intimid to intimidate predators, but to woo potential mates. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's a loud bird. Would encourage anyone to go and listen to it after this podcast to to hear what it sounds like. It's a very you're right. It's a very it, funky looking uh... bonus fact for you, which I didn't know. Uh, the decibel scale is an exponential scale, similar to the oh. chili scale. Scoville, sc yeah, the Scoville yeah. scale. It's not like you know. It's not like each one goes up in an X increment. So you know. Uh, yeah. You know, ten decibels. You know, is a you know diff between zero and ten, and between ten and twenty is yeah, not the I same amount. Saying. It's it's is... an increase in amount. Yeah, um, and I saw somewhere I think the difference between one hundred and seventy and one hundred and eighty is the same as the difference between one hundred and seventy and zero, based oh on the God. exponential scale. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. That is a proper yeah, wow moment. Proper wow. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know okay. that. I thought it was linear, but it's not. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, it's I, d I didn't know that. Um, and the, as you said, for chilies, the Schofield scale is exactly the same. So a Californian Reaper, which is you know like a ten thousand, or the Carolina, Carolina, Carolina yeah, Reaper, yeah, 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 yeah that's it's a hot very city, yeah. like when it's hot. When people go, it's I don't know. It's like twenty more than something on the on the scale, but actually that twenty more means that it's about seven times as hot. Um, so oh yeah, it's mad. I didn't it's know mad. that. Either. That's not that's, that's not yeah. actual, but it's uh, those are the, like the something that I don't know. Yeah, I know yeah. what you mean, but it's just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. interesting fact number three: uh, William Phelps uh, Eno um, invented the stop sign, the pedestrian crossing, pedestrian islands taxi stands uh, he even invented uh to a certain extent the roundabout but i'll explain but he never drove no. yeah. What? yeah so he um he's kind of qualified to um how to call it uh he, he was like the biggest businessman 
and inventor of basically all safety elements on the road, but he never drove ever. He's never driven, never actually learned to drive. The reason being is because he formed a lot of them when it was horse and carriage. Um, but he invented, he called it the rotary traffic plan. Um, and that rotary traffic plan is what forms the Arc de Triomphe roundabout in Paris. Oh, right. Um, and it's really interesting. Early okay. recognition for uh, the, um, how to call it, uh, the roundabout. Uh, the roundabout was, it was addressed, addressed that. Um, but he basically wrote the first highway code for America. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, but never drove. That's the bit that gets me. Like, if he'd been driving all his life and was like, I need to improve this, it'd be fine. But he never drove ever. So. That's bonkers. Fun fact number four. Or oh, interesting fact. Fun fact. This one isn't a fun fact. I've, I've said fun fact and I've run it. Uh, <laughs> no, understand why. When a pope dies, they're hit on the head by a silver hammer to make sure that they are dead. That's right. Yes, I knew yeah. about that. And they're not they're not whacked, so their skull is caved in, by the way, folks. <laughs> it is a small <laughs> silver hammer, and they t- are tapped on the head three times while their name is said to make sure that they are dead. Dom, you, only you could take something that's quite dark <laughs> and make it really dark. I said blame Laura. Her like, yeah, that... sense of humour is rubbing off on me. I mean, what what's going on tonight? Yeah, they don't cave his skull in. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, well, we knew that. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. So you knew that one. <laughs> I did know that one. Yeah. 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 I and I learned that not that long ago. Actually. Probably a quiz. In fact I, No, I think it was you know when I do my fun fact of the week, or I used to <laughs> when I used to send the email. <laughs> yeah, on those certain <laughs> topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and that came up and I thought, well oh, no, that's a bit dark, <laughs> I won't include that. But I did read that, so I did learn it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> that emails, that emails. Do you know what, do you know what that is not progressive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I miss those. Um, the inside of our eyes allow specialists to detect diabetes, Alzheimer's, and other diseases before we are even aware of it. Inside of our eyes are the most revealing part to our health. Whoa, 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 okay. So I knew about the diabetes, but Alzheimer's? Yeah, they can, they can really? do pretty much a lot of things through your eyes. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting that you've got a, a very, very old saying, which is the, the eyes are the windows mm. to your soul. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in literature that talks about the importance of eyes and, and what eyes reveal. Uh, and then And then it's interesting, later on, scientifically... It can. I, I had no idea mm-hmm. about yeah. Alzheimer's. That's, that's yeah, incredible. Loads of stuff. Um, so yeah, make okay. sure you always get your eyes tested, folks. I mean, I have to because I wear specs, and as do you, Jerry. Um, and my eyes are still changing, despite the fact that I'm nearly flipping thirty-one. Ugh. My eyesight's getting worse. We're, we're, we're Mine got worse you. by a whole point in nine months. <laughs> Yay. Is that exponential as well? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bloody, Bloody hell. hell. No, honestly, my eyesight is what it's... Yeah, I need to go back to the... Yep, I can't see anything now. I go to, go to pubs and you know, I can't even read the menu. If I don't... I always forget to take my glasses. And I'm literally... I need to get somebody to hold the menu half a kilometre <laughs> Are you at that stage? Before You're I can at that read stage it. where your arms yeah, aren't long enough to read a menu. <laughs> They're not long enough. Even my leg. Even if I was to... Can somebody sellotape this menu to my foot? Just use your toes. I'll read it. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, a 13-year-old boy in Florida, of course it would be Florida, was once arrested for farting too much in school. <laughs> we've got thunder pants now gentlemen. oh for goodness sake. welcome to america okay. florida specifically um oh. if you actually read into it it transpires that the boy was farting and then turning computers off and being generally disruptive and he was removed from the, the classroom by the school security officer because it's american and they classed that as an arrest because he could formally arrest somebody um, and he was released to his mother. So, okay, so that whole fact has taken something completely out, yeah, of, context. Taken something completely out of context. Okay. But right. it's a very interesting thing. If you put in, like, Google Florida man does, 
and then your birthday and you can just see what ridiculous thing a florida person florida man specifically has oh, done i love it okay I'm yeah because to... yeah I'm it's always that. florida when it comes to america so <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> excellent um child drawers are packed with teeth that you cannot see all teeth are formed before adult teeth come through so if you look at a uh skull of a child you'll see a set of teeth and then you'll see a set of teeth embedded above the other ones so your adult teeth are formed quite early in childhood and then basically they just grow and push the, your child teeth out Creepy. yeah so if you want to ever be creeped out creep, and creepy. if you ever want a better design for a skull for halloween which is in well, at the time of recording this, three Ooh. days' time. Uh, obviously, the podcast goes out the day after. Go and put a child's skull up instead of an adult skull, and then you can really creep people out because it is quite a scary thing. Go and have a look at a child's skull. You've just gone really, really dark, dark yeah. again. I think, I think we need to move on <laughs> swiftly. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the next one is fairly, is fairly nice. So... Uh, Military trained dolphins protect nearly a quarter of the U.S. stockpile. Uh, the U.S. have trained sea lions and dolphins as teammates to help detect sea mines and submarines and also to protect the U.S. The US stockpile. Um, and some of the dolphin names include Keeley, McKay and K-Dog. So I'm, this is a rabbit hole I'm probably going to go down at some point over the weekend when I'm just randomly Googling stuff. I'm fascinated by that. Because I've, I've heard stories of it and didn't think that it was true. It's true. Good Lord. I need to do my dolphin impression. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I've done Chewbacca today. I'm not going to do an dolphin impression. <laughs> oh, you're, that, that was a flawless <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> that's a drop the mic mm. moment right there i'm not gonna drop this it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> oh dear last two interesting facts then um so hummingbirds have to feed every 10 to 15 minutes to survive makes sense they uh the that energy sense. consumed for them to flap their wings is it means that they only have about enough energy to do 15 Why? minutes Okay, so so if I was a hummingbird, I wouldn't bother flapping my wings. I, I'd just go pro Mickey Flanagan, do proper fuck all. Literally just lie on the couch and go, I'll just feed in about two hours. I can't be bothered to flap my oh, wings. Dear. Oh, man, that is brilliant. Uh, in, uh, bonus fact about hummingbirds, <laughs> they don't actually, when they put their beak into like flowers and stuff, obviously they put the, the beak in, they've got that really long beak. Um, but they don't get the nectar with their beak. They use their tongues. And their tongues is their tongues, twice yeah. as long as their beak. And it shoots out like a little ant, ant, little ant eater almost. There you go. And then probably one of your favorite people. Uh, David Attenborough was born before sliced bread was invented. Yep. No. Sliced bread was invented on July the 7th, 1928, no. and David Attenborough was born 8th of May, 1926. So technically, he is the best thing pre-sliced bread. Absolutely. He was uh, two. Yeah, because people always ask, what was the best thing before sliced bread? David Attenborough. David Attenborough. Yeah, he was born... <laughs> he was born... Yeah, he was two when sliced bread was invented. <laughs> I I love that fact because I love he's, David Attenborough as well. He's a absolute and he's still a working. It's a ledge. Yeah. So to my ledge. dad, who's retiring at sixty, David Attenborough is working at ninety six. Hashtag, <laughs> Hashtag, <same>. Hashtag still working. Hashtag. Hashtag no rest for the weekend. Interestingly, I suspect that David Attenborough has probably earned a significant amount more money than my parents. Yeah, but the fact that he's still working, fair yeah, play to him. He is a legend. Right. Um, 
well we've done the interesting facts we're quite we've done quite a long podcast i'm gonna i, I think the topical event I, I i've noticed you put no notes and i i don't know if i think we've been quite heavy let's yeah. let's not do that one so we're gonna skip the topical event nah. um yeah. I do want to do a little bit on improving our health, but we're not going to do it. This is a little bit of just a general conversation. So um, November, or in some cases, Movember, um, both me and Jerry are bearded. So I'm... Yeah, how does that I'm work not for gonna, us? I have to admit, I am not <laughs> going to change because it took me flipping long enough to grow this beard. Um, but I will be... Yeah, I'm I will not be messing around. Money. So uh, Movember is the concentration for men's health. Um, specifically usually men's mental health um, although often it also comes down to uh, things like testicular cancer uh, and elements like that I was going to yeah it's not is it testicular it was a, yeah, I think, it is, isn't it or is it prostate uh, I, I don't know why it just, prostate, I think it's just generally Movember is a like lead thing to kind of support men and their and health issues because strictly speaking we are pretty terrible at talking about stuff we are to the point that i'm actually going to say something <laughs> ridiculous and i don't think it's really the place to start getting jovial about a, a serious topic but i i never thought at any point during today that i'd be saying oh i always had prostate <laughs> in my head <laughs> That is genius. I think I think it's. I'll be honest. I think it's totally okay to get jovial about these things because humor is. You yeah. have to like humor is one of the best things in the world. And I know I, I don't know if you've got time to watch the video that I posted. On, I, I on, haven't had time on, on, but I will yeah. watch it definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's so. Um, I suppose really this improving our health section is almost like my mine and Jerry's final thoughts but i'm going to get in there with my final thoughts yeah i love on this, this podcast yeah so um one of the things that i, uh, I i'm going to talk a little bit about kindness um a little bit about socialism and a little bit about friends helping us through tough times so a little bit interesting uh, about kindness so there isn't enough of it in the world that's 100 percent my 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 thought process about things that have happened recently there is not enough kindness in the world and i had a wonderful opportunity to practice doing something kind for something else so at the wedding on um on uh this weekend um obviously people had come from europe over um not just from germany there was a few other people from, from a few other countries that um they they knew um and they 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 got public transport, the train down to uh, where we were staying, and where we were staying was in the middle of freaking nowhere, right? And they so they went, well, we haven't got a lift, so we'll need to figure out taxis. And I was like, well, I've got a free car, so jump in, right? And I'm staying at the hotel, and you're staying at the hotel that we're having the reception. And they were like, oh, that's brilliant. And then it was sort of like, okay, in the morning we'll arrange taxis because we need to get back to get to the train station, and you know it it it's a little bit out of my way it wasn't massively out of my way it probably you know it's probably what i don't know not even five quid's worth of fuel or whatever but i said no it's not a problem i'll take you to the train station you know i'll do the 45 minute drive back to the train station then i'll go then i'll go home right it's not a problem it's really not a problem it, it you, you could say was it like things like that now i did this purely because i wanted to do something for somebody and i'd already offered to say i could take people and more people had got cars than we'd envisioned did it purely just to be nice to somebody mm. and the fact that i'm talking about it to me feels a little bit weird because i don't want to sound big-headed that i'd done it but i wanted to use it as an example that although my initial no it's, so although my thoughts were i'm just doing this to be nice to somebody right the feeling that it gave me afterwards kind of go oh i did something nice i feel you know, I feel like I've given a positive contribution to something. And it's another reason why I do this podcast, because if I can just make one person laugh at least yeah. once in the day, then I have contributed to something in the world. Yeah. So that's my first like point. I, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. I've got some points, but um, there's not enough kindness in the world. And I think the more kindness that we do, we can we can kind of do that. The other bit that that leads on to, so it's a bit around like socialism and and the way that the world needs to think less so, uh, less selfishly is obviously most of a lot of what we're seeing in terms of like politics and uh, world events seem to be 
like a lot of people will go, I can't believe there's so many crazy people about. Like, I can't believe people like Trump get in. And I'm very happy to politically say that Trump is a terrible person because he's a terrible person. Right? He should never, he shouldn't even be walking the streets. He should be arrested for some of the stuff that he's done because he's just a terrible person. And there are a lot of other people that I think, especially in American politics, that just shouldn't be about. I'm going to avoid British po- politics for the moment because that's just as much of a cluster. But people are going, I can't believe that this, like these crazy people are coming out and getting in power. Like it makes no sense. And what you find is as the world becomes more scarce or you know resources dwindle which is happening um and and power and and politics gets involved is that generally people become more selfish and that goes back to my first point like actually one of the things to do to the really break that cycle is to try and be kind and i think that you know i've become very frustrated in the last few like years with some of the decisions going by like what, I can't believe people have voted for that or I can't believe that person's got in power. That person, you know, has been able to invade this country and do this, whether it's, you know, whether and it's get away East, with it. whether it's and get away with it, yeah. get away with it. Right. And or people taking away choices. Right. People think that democracy is about voting someone in to do something. Well, it's not for me. Democracy is about being able to have a choice, which is why abortion laws that prevent abortion are anti-democratic even though they were voted they weren't voted in even even yeah. though the people that made those were voted in they are now making anti-democratic solutions but these people are getting in because generally when the world's resources dwindle people become more selfish and it's just another point where i want to go look if you just take five minutes to think of somebody else five minutes to be k- kinder i th- a lot of these like social issues will start to disappear because you'll suddenly go well yes i believe that abortion should be illegal but it's not fair for me it's selfish of me to put that in just for me i think it's okay that other people have their own decision i don't criticize people that believe in god or um you know or some other entity whether that's you know pastafarianism or you know judaism you're you're jewish you're whatever you you know as long as you aren't pushing that on me and at the moment like especially in american politics the worst per, worst religion at the moment is christianity they're pushing a lot of their agenda into that politics and i just want to say just take a step back right let's just do this and do this selfishly and then the final thing is you know obviously i've had a couple of rough couple of months in terms of health mm. um and i'm you know, I've been open with a couple of friends recently and trying to figure out a little bit about my past and why I'm like I am um, in terms of my limitations in certain areas, which I'm not going to go into the podcast because they're deeply, deeply personal. But just to say that despite my mini rant in the middle and my opportunity to say I was a little bit kind and it made me feel really good. And then my mini rant that I've had some very, very exceptionally supportive friends who I adore and appreciate and love significantly. And that's what I think Movember should really be about. It doesn't really matter whether what health issue you're going through. You, we as males, obviously, you know, we take up, I think it's 74% of the suicide rate is, is males. And oh if, if I can just have like one person like listen to this conversation, who's going through a tough time and for any of the stuff that myself and Jerry have done just to either put your smile on your face or even if this mini rant about me going just be kinder to somebody just say thank you just just give that person a hug um makes you go maybe I won't take my life in uh, you know soon that I'll be so pleased that that happens it's such important thing that I think we should just talk more and I am a testament to sort of say I've spoken to friends about some stuff which are, you know, which is deep and heavy and they probably going, yeah, some of it was deep and heavy, but you know, I'm just having a conversation with a friend who needed a bit of help, but me, I'm going, okay, I've got some stuff to process. So it's talk Mm. and, 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 and that's really important. And, and we, I want to, and I'm sure Jerry, you agree. We want to make this a platform. We called it distinct and jovial because we wanted comedy and humor. That's what we're good at. Even if that's through Chewbacca noises, <laughs> we are, tr- we are, tr- and we're trying to be distinct in the fact that the message that we give out is kindness, friendliness, and, and everything that we want to, we want to be passionate about. Yeah. 
So I've had my final thoughts. <laughs> Jerry, can all right, you okay, well, yeah, you just follow that, okay, uh, <laughs> thanks, um, all right, so my final thoughts are, ich bin ein Berliner, <laughs> I literally, no, I'm not even going to attempt to talk, I, I, I agree with everything you said, I think that's really, really poignant, and yeah, I agree, thank you. <laughs> I can't follow but that. It's too good. I, 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 yeah, I know. I, I have to. Admit, I had a lot of plan. I had a lot planned. I've done a lot of think. The joys of being ill, and when you don't get like time to do other things, is you you have a lot of time to think and a lot of time to process stuff. And uh, you know, I've had a lot of friends help me recently in a few things. And I mean, we've said the the massive love and appreciation we have for each other for oh, doing this podcast. Yeah, you've helped me um, loads. What was it? The I think you said it the other day. You said it in a meeting the other day to me. Um, so Jerry said something like, um, "I don't want to change." Uh, uh, no, uh, somebody said, "Oh, he's still doing a podcast," and you went, "I don't want to ever stop doing the podcast." Yeah. Until Dom wants, unless Dom wants to, and I was like, "Yeah, but I don't want to stop the podcast unless Jerry wants to." So, <laughs> so Jeez. you're stuck with us for the long haul, folks. You are. This is an infinite loop. <laughs> <laughs> it's an infinite loop that's it yeah because I, I i love it i mean i enjoy it more and more each time i know it's i i i always finish a podcast recording and think oh i love doing that that was amazing <laughs> and you think and there's always that worry that you think oh am i not going to enjoy the next one as much because that was pretty damn good mm. and then i do i just enjoy it just gets better and better and better so yeah yeah i and and the thing that I've done really well is is set the expectations for this in terms of like you know people listening and okay we don't get I don't get quite as many WhatsApps uh, as from as I did beforehand. Um, I got a flux from in fact I got a flux from somebody the other day, but that's because they actually listened to What's the May podcast. Influx. Like oh, influx. Mass, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, influx. yeah, yeah. But that's because they actually listened from to one from May, and they were asking me about opinions from May. I'm just trying to pull it up. Which was the one in May? Yeah, that's what I wanted to try and pull it up. Oh man, that's the only problem. My, my memory's shocking. So if somebody, <laughs> I know, I haven't got a Scooby. So you go. I try and think. I, I remember like the topics of each podcast, but I don't remember when. If that makes sense, I don't. I had to go and look it up. <laughs> oh my God, I'm trying to think about May. The last one was UFO. One. I'm, I'm just. I'm just trying to think. Was oh, the one before God. the last one? Was that with with hoops? So the last one was the you, spooky um, special conspiracy theory. Then we had um, then we had things like that. Oh no, it was the June. Po- it, was it June? Uh, I'm just going back. I'm just going. I'm going to go and have a look now. <laughs> we did have a. Dis- oh right, okay. We did have a discussion about where you keep your ketchup, tomato ketchup. Oh, what is in? Was that the one we were saying? Oh, do you keep it in the fridge? Yes. Do you yeah. Keep it in the fridge okay. The yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because they are a cupboard person. And I told them they were heathen and wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know many people that keep ketchup in a in a cupboard. To be fair. Yeah. Well, if you read the instructions, it says keep it chilled keep it in the fridge anyway we're digressing from my beautiful final thoughts <laughs> oh your your final thoughts Selfishly. Were, no your final thoughts are amazing so yeah i can't top that so i, I like i say i'll just leave it with ich bin ein berliner <laughs> that's the same so, was i hope i hope she'll be impressed with my german i should be more impressed with your german than she was with mine i can tell you that <laughs> uh, uh, okay so maybe final final thoughts would be uh entschuldigen sie bitte wie komme ich am besten zum bahnhof Wow. Zum Flughafen? Zum Kreisestraße? <laughs> That's really good. Danke. And danke I mean schön. that sincerely. Oh, danke. I mean that sincerest, sincerely. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks, for watching, for listening. Uh, we do really appreciate it. Uh, we have some really exciting podcasts coming up. We're going to have the Christmas special next. Uh, then we're going to have, we've got a guest lined up. Uh, and then we've got two potential guests, um, which we need to book in. Uh, and then we are also looking to have a guest back 
as well yes. and we'd love to do and we're going to try and experiment as we said with perhaps more than one guest at a time so that'd be uh, brilliant thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching folks uh, and catch you all on the next one take care everybody guten tag <laughs>